what are you most excited to see here today? Something I'm not excited for. <laughs> I think honestly being able to see a lot of people who played online together finally in the same area after everything that's gone on and being able to get back together, like that's going to be a really fun time for people to be able to like see each other across the way. Now there's a lot happening, there's a lot being revealed, you guys are getting that inside scoop on it, but we've got Warzone 2.0, we've got multiplayer, so much going on. What is your game? What is your game on cards? You know, what are you looking forward to? So I'm a huge multiplayer search and destroy fan, Ooh, nice. so a little bit different than most people here. They play mainly Warzone, not that great at Warzone, but search and destroy, quick scoping, that's my thing. Okay, we love to hear that, and what about you? Also, search and destroy, that's how we met, wow, so... hardcore. Yeah, search <laughs> and destroy all day. So of course here for Modern Warfare 2, so many different things that you're going to be able to test out here today. What are you looking forward to the most? Uh, I'm most looking forward to find out more information about Warzone 2 and the future of the franchise. I think that Warzone has really helped adapt to a casual audience, whereas the CDL has been growing the more competitive side of things. And I just want them to see them, you know, be able to refine it, come in with Ricochet this time, not have any of the issues we did with Verdance and really be able to, you know, just start, hit the ground running this time. As we look ahead to Warzone 2, do you have any favorite memories on Warzone? 
On Warzone 1? Oh yeah, I have some great ones. Um, the end of Verdansk was probably one of my favorite things. I streamed for, I did my first subathon. it was seven days straight, and we, we covered the whole thing from the Easter eggs and all the things that told us what was gonna happen, to seeing the nuke actually explode. And I, I don't know if anybody keeps up with Modern Warzone, but I had been saying since Verdansk came out that it was gonna be blown up by a nuke. So to see it happen was just euphoric for me. Nice. Well, I can't it. wait to see if your predictions come true for this next game as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. So well, guys, we got nine minutes left, so stay tuned after. I'm going to give my post show thoughts, but uh, yeah, I'm going to shut up now. You guys can watch the countdown and listen to the room. The rest of these esport fans, fanatics. <laughs> Kudos to them. I hope Warzone's so much better. I personally don't care about Warzone, but let's see what they got. Catch you guys after. Obviously, new iteration of the game. We're expecting so many different things coming out to play here. Yeah. What do you expect out of this new game? What are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to the Call of Duty polished feel you expect, especially from Infinity Ward. I think that was my favorite part of Modern Warfare 2019. Was just how smooth everything felt. I love the field upgrades. I'm wondering if they potentially added any more. And at the end of the day, they've already teased earlier today the brand new Gunsmith 2.0. I want to see what type of crazy weapons we can come up with. I cannot wait to just lay the smack down on all the Call of Duty League pros that are here. They're all absolute noobs. I'm looking forward to today. Swag, so good to have you guys in the building. Of course, we have Modern Warfare 2 coming up. You're going to get a chance to get on the sticks and play it. How are you feeling about this brand new title? Really good, man. I mean, MW2, the name itself, has so much hype around it, and it's just so exciting to play a game. Infinity War is my favorite company to make the game, so I'm super excited. Amazing stuff. So, gents, how are you guys feeling? We've got Warzone 2.0. Our, our first event here, so, I mean, we're, we're really excited to be here. <laughs> I'll, I'll pass the mic around. Okay. Anything you'd like to add? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm super excited. This is the first like Call of Duty um, like event. Like we said, this like is our first ever event. That so I've this been is really to, new so to us. I'm, I'm um, really, really exciting. Uh, I don't know what to expect, but I, I just, I'm just ready to play. You know what I mean? Any favorite memories from the original Modern Warfare 2 that anyone wants to share? Ooh. I need a uh, 
I, 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 I remember. I remember the first nuke I ever got was on the map Estate, and I was hype. I was like 13, 13 years old. Silence ACR going crazy. I, was, I don't. I don't. I mean, I didn't play it either. I went back and played it, but it was it was already too late. It could be a more recent right. memory. I'll tell you what. Though. I was a campaign guy. All right. Campaign boy. I was campaign. I played campaign. That's what I did. Well, I, I do know we're going to have a kick-ass campaign coming in. So what, what do you expect out of a good campaign? So if you're a campaign guy, what do you look for? I don't know. I just played it. The missions are fire. So I just want to fire missions again. I go lie. Wasn't that the one we had to crawl and be secretive or something yeah. like that too? I always I love the, like, the sniper missions. Where yeah, you that's what I'm saying. Like, like, it was really dope. I love that. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm not going to waste any more time. Go enjoy it. Get on the sticks. And uh, we'll, we'll catch up with you later to see how you feel about it. Well, we get to see multiplayer and Warzone 2.0. What are you expecting? What are your big expectations from this new iteration of Warzone? Um, I'm excited. I'm excited to see the map with Caldera. There was a lot of like elevation, and I liked in Verdansk how it was like a lot of buildings. So I'm hoping to see a lot of like buildings for like building fights because I'm I'm a close range player. So that's what I'm looking forward to. But
We're a team. All of us. Let's go get him. Yes, sir. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Call of Duty Next. I am Johanna Ferris, the general manager of Call of Duty, and I am thrilled to help kick off a truly significant moment, not only for the highly anticipated upcoming release of Modern Warfare 2, but a very significant moment for the future of the entire Call of Duty franchise. You see, over the last several years, we've experienced explosive and dynamic growth, and we've learned a ton along the way. And those learnings have fueled our ambition to deliver a wholly new, elevated player experience. One focused, of course, on delivering more fun and innovation, but also state-of-the-art tech advancements built to support a more connected Call of Duty community than ever before. So just know that what we share today across Modern Warfare 2, our brand new Warzone 2.0 experience coming later this fall, and our designs to bring Warzone to mobile for players on the go are all certainly big news, but it's just the first chapter of a very bold, long-term vision that we carry to take Call of Duty to even higher heights in the years to come. Ultimately, though, we know that you, our players and fans around the world, will be the judge of all that. And it's why we are thrilled to be doing this on the eve of our Modern Warfare 2 beta and to be here live in person with more than 200 of the biggest streamers and creators in all of gaming. They will finally get their hands on the true star of the show, the gameplay itself. So let's get right into it. It is my esteemed pleasure to introduce, alongside me, Patrick Kelly, co-studio head of Infinity Ward and the executive creative director of Call of Duty. Pat, welcome. Thank you, Johanna. It's so exciting to be here with all of you. Uh, it's been such a journey to get to this place. You know, I, I, on the franchise, I always get asked by people, or regularly get asked by people, what are the areas you focused on improving, or what are the areas you innovated on? We worked on improving and innovating on every area of the game. I, I, it, it always comes back to gameplay. Gameplay is king. But I, I could go on and on. Things like third person, things like where we've innovated in, in the space of Battle Royale. We've got an all new mode in DMZ that has large player counts along with massive player counts of, of AI. Um, and it goes on and on and on. We've got mobile connected with progression and everything else across all of the, the games. And it just goes on and on. But you know what? It all comes back to one thing. It comes back to fun. Everything we do is in the service of fun. Whether you're a hardcore player or a casual player, whether you are somebody who likes to play with your friends or you like to play alone, wherever you play it, be it on console or PC or mobile, um, however you play, whether you're a camper or a slayer, we've tried to think about fun for you. And hopefully today you're gonna see that and play that and uh, fun is what you come away with. Absolutely. Uh, you know, fun is definitely what we're going to be heavily focused on. And I'm particularly excited about some of the social features that are coming as part of this launch. Things like proximity chat and new gulag twists. There's definitely going to be instances where players will interact not only with their own squads, but may even have to work together with other players in unexpected and pretty fresh ways. We've already seen some hilarious interactions, in fact, during play sessions. And I can't wait to see how these new ways to connect evolve over time. Now, Pat, what can you tell us about weapons? Oh, wow. So we've completely innovated in the area of connecting you, the player, to your instance in the game, making you feel more in the game. And I guess you can think about it as starting out with the camera. The camera represents your eyes, right? So connecting the camera to your body, we've done that with some inverse kinematics and some physics and, and other things like that. We've connected then the body to the hands on the gun. 
again, with some sophisticated uh, inverse kinematics. We've connected the gun with the actual bullets coming out of it. So now, when wherever that gun is pointed, however it's pointed, the bullets are coming out of it exactly from the, the barrel. There's no disconnect there. And that's before I even get into what we've done with the new gunsmithing and how you build your weapons and the platforms, et cetera. But look, I, you're going to play it, and I hope you'll love it like we do. All right. Well, we've taken up enough time. But before they kick us off the stage, can we tell them about raids? Yes, thank you. So we, with the beginning of Modern Warfare 2, and then shortly after that, Warzone 2.0, and then very shortly after that, for the first time ever, we're going to release a raid in Call of Duty. It's a very different kind of gameplay. It's very intense. We think it's very fun, um, and, and we're super excited about it. And by the way, there's one other thing I want to talk about for all, all of uh, you hardcore players out there. I heard so many of you talk about what, what play challenges can you give us beyond just winning, which, anyway, I won't go off on that, but we've got a whole series of quests and gameplay challenges that occur when you actually win in Warzone or you hit different milestones that you'll have an opportunity to, to do. And believe me when I say, everyone in the match will know when you're on them and if you, if you prevail at them. So look forward to that. Big things ahead. And now, before we kick it over to Miles and team to carry the day, we are extremely excited to give you the world premiere of the Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer trailer. Thanks again and enjoy the show. <laughs> We got intel reports of Hassan and the cartel forming terrorist cells all over the globe. We've never seen activity on this scale before. They have an army. But we have each other. The world is a vampire. Be okay. Hostage secure. access to the open beta. We got intel reports of Hassan and the cartel forming terrorist cells all over the globe. We've never seen activity on this scale before. They have an army. The world is a vampire. Extraction. 
Enemies above. Drill charge. This is Eyes on the hostage. You're gonna be okay. Hostage secure. Sniper, on cover. Decoy! Gotcha. to the open beta. And there we go, Call of Duty fans. The trailer so nice. We ran it twice. It is all there. Everything that makes this franchise so, so special. We are incredibly excited to be here today. And after that, quite frankly, how can you not be? My name is Miles Ross, and I am so excited to truly be here with a few of the members of the Infinity Ward team who are bringing Modern Warfare 2 to life. Guys, we have 200 of our friends behind us who are going to be playing and streaming shortly. But before that, we also have Stephanie Snowden, Director of Communications for Infinity Ward, as well as Joe Seeker over the on there, Jeff Smith, multiplayer design directors here at Infinity Ward. Guys, first off, oh, how are things <laughs> evolving uh, from Modern Warfare 2019? I mean, let's start high level because there's a lot to get through today, guys. You saw that trailer. Let's go with the philosophy, Steph. Let's, let's stay high level. What went into the creation of the game? You said it precisely. There is so much. This game has just so much content. It's got something for everyone. And it's really been the result of three years of hard work um, at IW and our partners across all of the Activision studios. And so much of that work started with you guys at home. The community, the fans, our creators here, and that conversation and feedback from 2019 is really been a core piece of what Modern Warfare 2 is. And it's a dialogue that we hope to, uh, you know, continue, especially here today. Well, we've got so much in store with this MP experience. And um, people like Jeff and Joe here, who I am honored to work with and their experience on this franchise, we're in good hands. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Okay, so Jeff, um, well, I don't know where to start anymore. Uh, let's, uh, let's set up what Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer is, is all about. Uh, and let's stay high level for now, because there's a lot of details, friends, juicy details. Sure, I mean, you know, when you come into making a sequel, it can be kind of tricky, you know. Um, what do you keep from the previous game? Uh, what do you get rid of? And where can you add new things in and not mess up this kind of nicely balanced ecosystem that we had? Uh, and so we came up with a few uh, methods, one of them being uh, player behaviors. And I say behaviors um, and not uh, play styles. I think a lot of people will say play styles, but that can kind of change during a match. But behaviors are more ingrained in how players play. Um, and we just put them into three big groups. Uh, we call them rushers, which are just aggressive players. They just want to find the action and go. And then we have sentinels. Um, and these are defensive players. They want to just kind of hold down a building, maybe keep a little overwatch. Um, and then we have um, stalkers, which are reactive. And they kind of hang back and try to read the field and read where um, spawns are. And really, we just kind of use these as filters to keep us honest with the content that we're making. Um, so they're making enough toys and equipment for players to be successful playing our game. Sounds like a lot of fun. Stephanie, uh, what are some of the new features coming to multiplayer, um, some of the new stuff that you're most excited to talk about? Oh, boy. There are a ton of new features to dive into with this game. But um, we really pushed forward even the most fundamental aspects of, of what makes a Call of Duty game um, with Modern Warfare 2. And it's been really amazing for me to come on board uh, this past year and see these innovations 
coming to life to hear Jeff jump into, you know, breaking down the 1v1. Um, and personally for me, uh, water. Our water, I've seen the memes, we love water. It's really hard to make in games. Um, but the aquatic combat, some of the things you're able to do with vehicles in the water, I think that level of immersion is really going to speak to fans and has been something that I've really enjoyed playing the last, uh, last couple months. Aquatic combat. Steph loves to swim. Um, Joe, sure can, we, can we go into some details about our water-based adventures in MW2? Yeah, I mean, last game we really wanted to add water, and we knew we didn't have time, right? So in Verdance, we froze the rivers and we made the outskirts just to kill trigger. And this game, as soon as we started Modern Warfare 2, we leaned into water, both visually, um, beautiful caustics, um, there's waves with white caps. Um, but we also, the gameplay side, there's unique ballistics underwater. Um, you only can use certain weapons underwater. Your pistol is your weapon underwater, otherwise you can't use your primary weapons. Um, but it's also a nice cover or evasion mechanic. If you're getting shot at, you can dive into the water, and as you get deeper, it gets murkier. Like, the farther you are from something, you can't see it. And so, it's been super fun for us to, to dig into water and really flex on what water could be in Call of Duty. And you saw the boats and the mine that floats and every the piece Crocs of equipment mine. yeah, has been love it. filtered. Like, how does it work through water? Like, we had to look at everything in the game and say, how does it work in water? Our What's vehicles, the best version? Our vehicles will just slowly submerge <laughs> yeah. really would, instead of blinking out. Yeah, everything. Yeah, everything. A lot of details. The oh behaviors are awesome. Oh my God! Well, I cannot wait to uh, can't quite wait to literally haha, dip my toes into those waters. Uh, but guys, let's not forget about the ground and the air. Like, I mean, what else is going to be coming to the movement system, Joe? What have we got? Well, you know, last game we did mount um, and we had slide, and, and even though we're a military shooter, fluid movement is super important to us. So this game, you saw in the trailer, you can see here on the video, we have a new ledge hang mechanic, and that's essentially a high mantle. But instead of doing a high mantle and throwing yourself up over into combat, you can now peek. If you have a pistol, you can pull that pistol out and use that. Um, we also added a dive. You know, last game we had the slide that kept your gun up, but we really wanted players to have an option where if they're getting shot at, they don't know where they're getting shot at, they can get down, get out of fire. But the other really cool thing is it dives just high enough to let you get through a window. And so if you throw a grenade up into a building, second story, often you'll see players, you know, like rats leaving a ship, diving out through the windows. <laughs> and uh, it's just another, it's another option for players in, in combat. Yeah, and all of these dynamic movements mean you can interact with vehicles specifically in a very cool way. I'm yeah. going to save uh, some of that some of that gas for when we get to Warzone 2.0, but uh, it's a really exciting. All right, vehicle details to come. Uh, but now, guys, let's talk about equipment. Obviously, Call of Duty, crazy sandbox, a lot of cool toys to play with. Uh, Joe, what are some of the new dynamite new items that we're going to be throwing at each other and equipping and using in all sorts in the next game? I mean, you saw some cool stuff in the trailer. You saw the drill charge. You saw the shock stick. Um, one of the other cool ones you saw is the inflatable decoy. And this is a mine that you can throw out, and it basically sits there. And if a player gets close to it, it auto-deploys, and uh, basically inflates like a, like a car airbag going off. <laughs> And it faces the person that triggered it. And so it's a great distraction technique. You can also fire it off with a, with a clacker if you want to control when it goes off. You can throw it in water. And here you just saw the, the DDoS. We added all this equipment into this game. And the DDoS is our, our kind of answer of like, hey, I'm going to breach this building. I want to go clean house, but I don't want to deal with all the shit inside. So I'm going to hit the DDoS. Boom, it's going to shut down Perfect everything. And I can move in yeah, and clear that room. Um, you saw the heartbeat sensor is back. It's got a new look. Uh, but it also has a battery as a balancing mechanic, so you can't use it indefinitely in Warzone. Um, and there's, I mean, there's this so much This is the TAC more. cam, too, which yeah. you guys yeah. just saw, which to me is um, my personal favorite. You can put out a lot of them, and yeah. even you can patch into your teammates. So you can, it gets a little crazy. Yeah, kind of like a more. sticky GoPro, but will actually mark your enemies for um, your team. Yeah. So it's, it's, I, I expect to see a lot of fun there's so many, with that today. <laughs> so many toys and new tools that we're like we just want players to get in and play with. I think there's something like 13 filled upgrades, you know, between Warzone and Core MP, and it's it's pretty awesome. Oh my god! Until they all get DDoS. Ha <laughs> <Yeah>. ha <laughs> uh, All this talk about equipment, uh, it reminds me. I mean, that's one element to look at now, but we've also got Gunsmith, brand new Gunsmith. Uh, guys, what can you tell me about it, and and how will it change the way that we you know level our weapons and manage them? I mean, what's going on there? Yeah, so the new Gunsmith allows players to build out their weapons more smoothly than ever before. We, we put out some videos yesterday for the Intel drop. I hope people dig into those if you want a better look at Gunsmith 2.0. But we're really looking at 
unprecedented opportunities for weapon customization. And the new weapon platforming will actually allow players to unlock universal attachments through cross progression. So we saw a lot of really positive feedback from the community yesterday. This is sort of intended to, you know, decrease the grind. You're no longer unlocking every single attachment for every single weapon. There will be some shared attachments through progression. And um, I'm really excited to see the streamers and the content creators jump into this today. Um, I know I know we all love the gun bench from 2019, so it's exciting. Yeah, this does sound amazing. Uh, so we've been hearing uh, a little bit about weapon platforms and shared attachments. This is very, very cool stuff. Can you dive into those details, though, Jeremy? What can we expect? Yeah, I can add a little bit of what, to what Stephanie said. Um, we had this vision last game with Gunsmith, and we, we were like, okay, what if you could take an assault rifle and you could make it an SMG? And that was our driving kind of like motivator for that system. And we kind of hit that. We, you, could, you could take it functionally through attachments, but the weapon name wouldn't change, and we couldn't change the receiver. And really, that's the key thing this game, is you can go into Gunsmith, you can set up an AK-47 assault rifle with a thermal optic, with a suppressor, with a grip, and then you can say, you know what, I want to change up the play style of this gun. You can swap out the receiver to the AK-74U, make it an SMG, but you can keep that optic, that suppressor, that grip, they all come with. And to what Stephanie said, we have shared attachments within these platforms. We have branching progression. You unlock those guns by playing with other guns. And then we have shared attachments across all guns, and it's all to hit this vision of I'm building up an arsenal of weapons and an arsenal of attachments. I'm sitting down to my gun bench, and I'm going to make the perfect weapon for me. I think the maybe the simplest way to think about it is this, is a gun tree, and each time uh, you hit a branch, uh, that's a receiver, and they and they grow out of that. Yeah. Yeah, and that's you know we wanted to ground that in reality. The re functionally a receiver, you know, is is based in that changing the weapon type, and I think it provides a really seamless experience for players looking to build out the perfect weapon for a multitude of play styles. So you're going to be able to jump into that platform and customize however you want for, you know, situational combat. And um, you're actually going to see the FJX Cinder Weapon Vault in action today, which is the entirely unlocked Platform 1, the M4, the Mic 4. And the Weapon Vault maintains its aesthetic properties across all corresponding attachments. So we've heard you talk about the Franken print. This is our answer. It's an extremely rare. Um, this is a huge you know, project for, for our teams to design these, but um, it is the ultimate weapon blueprint. And even better, you can unlock the entire Cinder Weapon Vault with the Vault Edition of Modern Warfare 2. Okay. Available in beta. Available in beta, so we can rock with that thing all weekend long. Okay, so Gunsmith looks incredible. Uh, okay, I'm excited. I cannot wait to get into this one soon. Our streamers are going to get into this one soon as well. Uh, but first, guys, we need to hear about maps and modes. We've got our tools to play with, equipment, weapons, maps and modes, though. Let's get into this one. Uh, let's get into uh, the design team, you know, the philosophy, uh, I suppose, behind building out maps. Ask me, Jeff, this is for you. Um, yeah, you know, right from the start, we knew we wanted to build a big, another big map, um, not only for Battle Royale, but also for this other mode that we've been working on for uh, quite a long time. <laughs> um, and I read about that on the internet. Ah, yeah. yes. <laughs> but, you know, when, when you lay out these big maps, you, it's kind of a collection of all these little POIs, these points of interest. And um, within each of these, we've really fine-tuned that they can play core, large-scale core modes, like Ground War, um, and a bunch of others um, really well. And so, you know, stepping back from this large map and looking at how much open world sandboxy gameplay that we have, we looked back at our 6v6 maps and really tried to refine and uh, make them a tighter experience to contrast all this big world um, kind of exploratory gameplay. So the maps uh, for 6v6, um, in comparison to the last game, they're just um, a little bit more straightforward, a little bit more refined, and um, I think fans will really enjoy how um, quick they play. That sounds... A lot of diversity in those maps yeah. as well. A lot of visual variety, some colorful maps in there, and um, they, I think they, they feel really clean. Guys, you're moving me in ways I didn't imagine to be moved today. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Drive? I might. <laughs> hey, hey, it's the first time for okay. it here on, on air. Uh, we've got some of the maps that we are going to be seeing in MW2. Uh, starting with one, uh, we've got a real fun one here, guys. This is one of the aforementioned battle maps. Uh, team, can you give me some details on Sarif Bay? 
So Sarif Bay is this little fishing town um, in the south coast of our big map. And it, we picked this because it has such a great mix of gameplay. Uh, it's right on a harbor, so we get to show off all our boats and our new amphibious um, APC. Um, and, you know, swimming, as we've already said. Um, but what you get inside the town is this really intense urban combat with all these tight little alleyways and uh, all this great rooftop combat. And mixed with our ledge hang, you get these really cool parkour combat um, uh, action happening. Yeah, I love how you describe the, uh, the rooftops there on this map specifically as like a separate ecosystem. You can kind of migrate that entire vertical. You can go up there yeah. and just hang out and fight other snipers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that looks fantastic. Jeff, okay, so that's one of our larger maps. Uh, what about some of the 6v6 maps? I think we have uh, we have some footage of one of the new maps that we're going to be seeing today uh, named Mercado Las Almas. Uh, do you mind giving us some details on this one? Sure. Mercado is, um, is a uh, little street market in a historic section in Mexico. Um, our story behind this is, uh, you know, the authorities have some intel that uh, narcotics are being smuggled out of a warehouse, and they're going in trying to um, find and seize them. Um, this map plays really fast and a lot of action right down that center lane. Um, the Mercado is a very dangerous uh, neck of the woods, so watch out when you're uh, playing in the beta. It plays fast. <laughs> cannot wait, really cannot wait. Looks fantastic. And again, uh, interesting to see uh, you know, how that ties into campaigns and whatnot. All sorts of fun and games wink, ahead wink. of us. Looks amazing. Battle maps, core maps, 6v6. All this looks fantastic. Uh, but let's go back to modes. So we've seen some maps. Uh, what about the modes being played on battle maps? Uh, we will have the return of Ground War, uh, but we've got a new large scale mode that you've uh, alluded to, right? Let's talk Invasion. So Invasion is, it's a, it's a big war map, it's like, it's a big war TDM, or we affectionately call it the, the shipment of ground war. Um, it's 20 v 20 players, but there's also 20 AI on each team. Uh, AI are coming in fast roping, they're coming in on medium birds, um, and it's this high action mode, it's super fun, but it's also really chill. The announcer's not barking at you, he's not saying like, hey, get to B, you know, they're taking C. <laughs> you can kind of play it how you want to play it. You sit up on a rooftop and snipe, you can grab a shotgun and go room clearing. If you push too far into the enemy's base, AI will come hunt you. Uh, but we've also been really um, conscious of where we put AI in multiplayer. Um, we didn't put AI in kill streaks or anything like that because we don't want AI showing up in search and destroy. We don't want AI in domination. This mode, though, however, was built for AI, and it's a super fun mode. Can't wait for people to try it. Kind of a funny aside, you know, we took the name Ground War from a playlist in MW2, and that was just large scale TDM and DOM. And we kind of did the DOM in the last game, um, and now we're able to add kind of the sandbox TDM, and so we're kind of completing the cycle of that um, that old playlist. Yeah. yeah. Well, this large scale stuff looks amazing. This looks so, so awesome. And uh, OK, so what about the new 6v6 modes? Just keep dialing it in closer and closer. Steph, what have we got? Yeah, so we also have two new 6v6 modes that you're going to be seeing here played today, um, and they will be in beta in Prisoner Rescue and Knockout. Prisoner Rescue. Okay, let's go into Prisoner Rescue first, Joe. So Prisoner Rescue is an attack and defend mode. It's a round-based mode. The defenders have two prisoners. They're kind of spread out, and they need to, to keep hold of them. The goal of the attackers is to get to those prisoners, pick them up, and carry them to Xville. Um, when you pick them up, you enter what's called a wounded carry, where they're up on your shoulders and you can't use your primary weapons. Instead, you have to use a pistol if you brought it or you're just stuck with fists. But the way that we give the attackers an advantage once they grab that prisoner is they get a radar sweep for their team so they can call out where the defenders are. Um, and the objective icon over the prisoner goes away as soon as they scoop them up. So now the defenders have to basically rotate back to the Xville and set up defensive positions. And it's this heart-pounding, adrenaline-pushing like mode once you grab that prisoner and try and get them out. Um, yeah, that, it's, that hero run to yeah. the Xville is... Um, <laughs> Definitely, uh, you know, S and big S&D energy in this mode, um, which I resonates with me in my time in eSports. So this is my personal favorite of the new ones, and um, also sort of the strategic revives that happen. And there is mm -hmm. a revive mechanic, and so you are able to to pick up your teammates. And um, I've seen some pretty pretty wild comebacks in our playtest so far. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we got to play a tiny bit yesterday. It was amazing, incredibly fun. And I know the community is going to love diving into it over the next week. Okay, I can hardly believe that there's actually a lot more content to get through. But there's one more thing I have to bring up. I have the honor of officially announcing that third-person view is finally coming to Modern Warfare 2. Uh, what are the details behind this one? We got a little teaser of it uh, on, on stage from Patro, but what are the details? Yeah, you saw a little hint of it in the trailer, too. Um, it's It's been a pet project for us, right? We've always wanted to do third-person, and all we're 
we're working on all this other stuff we've been kind of lifting up and doing third person in each mode. And the cool thing is that it's a modifier on our game, right? We can just turn on third person. In the beta, we'll be playing it in hardpoint, but we want to try it post-launch in S&D. We want to try it in VR. Um, and we have... You know, camera work, the camera collision's been reworked, uh, it handles tight spaces, there's a water camera, there's an interior camera. You can feel the weapon shake when you're firing with it, and it's just, we've put a lot of work into it, and we're excited for people to give it a try. Incredible. I can't wait to see what third-person COD feels like in 2022. Sexy skins and everything. This is a lot of information, Steph. Like, we've, there's a ton here. I tried to warn you. They're <laughs> delivering a lot of new features for you guys to try out ahead of release. Um, and I said we were going to be bold with this beta, and we are, but there's even more to come at launch. So this is just a taste. How is this just a taste? How can there be even more? <laughs> I mean, we haven't even got to Warzone yet. <laughs> well, <not> even, okay. <laughs> okay, so what about uh, this year's third mode? So I'm happy to say that Special Ops will return as our third mode and will be focused on two-player missions, asymmetrical in game design. So think one player on air support, one player on the ground. And um, I think the OG fans will be really excited because we've looked at, you know, some of the iconic Modern Warfare missions like Overwatch and, and really tried to um, implement some of those themes into the design. So uh, we'll be talking more about special ops in the uh, in the months to come. Steph, you're saying I should be looking uh, now for a special ops partner. Sitting right next to you. Yes, you are indeed. Well, I'm all set then, Stephanie. I do believe we have one more uh, surprise for PlayStation players out there. What's that? Indeed we do. Let's uh, roll the clip. Empty-handed, I was born. Empty-handed, I will ascend. Blade or bullet, fist or bow. Spear, stone or arrow, these are merely tools. I am the one to fear. Miles ISO. Fix your mic. PlayStation players will receive an exclusive operator, Oni. Oni is a warrior and gun for hire, descended from centuries old samurai clan and torn between country and family, just like me. Uh, this is such an awesome looking operator, guys. Oni is going to be playable on day one for all who pre ordered through the PlayStation Store. Plus, he comes with a high level weapon bl blueprint playable in multiplayer and Warzone 2.0. Steph, badass. Oni is awesome. I myself am a PlayStation player, and so I will be locking becoming Oni main day one for this game. Um, <laughs> And it's been really awesome to see our narrative team building out his lore, really bringing this operator to life with the creation of his backstory, his motives. And I think um, the art team absolutely crushed it with this skin. He is so, so cool looking. <laughs> all right, Stephanie, we keep talking about all the uh, the things that you know we have to look forward to, but um, we are missing quite a big one here. We're missing the start of the beta. So for anyone who wants to get an early first-hand look at Modern Warfare 2, and trust me, you definitely want to, it is immediately available around the corner. For PlayStation players who pre-order any version, early access to the open beta starts tomorrow. So make sure you are pre-loading right now. Now also check out your screens, since here's exactly when you can play the beta on your platform of choice. But don't forget, friends, it's also definitely worth noting that if you pre-order the Vault Edition of Modern Warfare 2, you get to use the red Team 1 for one operator pack and the FJX Cinder Weapon Vault in the beta in addition to being able to earn in-game rewards for playing all sorts of cool swag. And don't forget that if you digitally pre-order Modern Warfare 2, you also get up to a week early of campaign access. So wait, campaign a week early. All right, folks. Early. I hope you enjoyed that first look at Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer. Don't forget, you're going to get to see it live and in action in a few short minutes with our crazy set of streamers here, 200 plus here and ready to rock and roll. But first, We'll be right back to show off the world premiere of Warzone 2.0. Don't go anywhere. Call of Duty Next, brought to you by Mountain Dew, official drink of Modern Warfare 2. Little Caesars, a proud partner of Call of Duty Next and Modern Warfare 2. HyperX, official peripheral partner of Call of Duty. Play like a pro on the big screen with 144Hz VRR and AMD FreeSync, now on TCL 6 Series TVs. Prime Gaming, 
Visit gaming.amazon.com today and start claiming your free content. This is about to be a classic. We have 200 creators here on site marching down the green carpet with one mission in mind to be the first players to play Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. This one you're gonna have to And there is so much in this game. There is almost too much. This is like one of those days where I enter and my hopes are so high. And what are you looking forward to most when it comes to Warzone 2? Prisoner rescue. I'm looking forward to using that inflatable soldier decoy to mess a lot of players. Kill streaks, I think. I'm honestly here just to learn as much as I can to prep for old men of optic because those guys are very old now. So maybe some OG maps coming back. A map that everyone can play. Honestly, give me a broken shotgun. <laughs> What's your favorite game mode and Mountain Dew flavor combo? Search and destroy code red. Capture the flag code red. If I'm going hard with the boys on a long night at SD and I'm trying to get some nasty in game comms, I'm drinking Baja Blast all night. <laughs> terminal or high rise? Easy terminal. Ooh, terminal. Most people have terminal nostalgia. Terminal. Terminal. 100%. I just replayed that recently and I realized that spawn trapping is horrendous. Easy. Strike. High rise. High rise. Terminal. What's your favorite flavor of Mountain Dew? I've grown up on Code Red, so it's still Code Red for me. Honestly, I like the basic one, just Mountain Dew itself. Man, I was going to pick Code Red, too. Can I get a second one? All right. Baja Blast. Starting October 17th, unlock dual double XP, COD points, and also an exclusive Mountain Dew skin in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 when you buy specifically marked Mountain Dew. You thinking you getting me is you kidding me? Ripping everything and I'm forgetting to show you. Welcome back to Call of Duty Next. The Mountain Dew green carpet. God damn, it was beautiful. A lot of fun people out there. Everyone having a good time. And uh, some incredibly well-dressed people out there. And some definitely not. Sweaty t-shirts are bound. But here we go. Welcome back to Call of Duty Next, friends. We promised it was coming up. And now the wait is over. It is time to talk about Warzone 2.0. We got a glimpse of some Warzone 2.0 in the multiplayer, multiplayer reveal trailer earlier today. And it does look awesome. However, we need some true experts to help out. Back at the desk here, we have got Stephanie Snowden. Josie got is joining us. But of course, welcome Jack O'Hara, game director at Infinity Ward. Joe, how are we feeling? We're ready to party here? I mean, this is, a, this is a lot. We need to know everything. Warzone 2.0. Stephanie, the world cannot wait. <laughs> it, it, it feels crazy for me to be up here revealing Warzone 2.0. I ended up at IW as a fan of the game, and so this moment is absolutely bananas for me. But Warzone 2.0 is everything that we loved about the original Warzone, right? Where it, it, It's based on the same experience that we all had, that that fun, all of those moments. And it's a, it's a return to shared tech across the universe for Modern Warfare 2. And that's gonna create a really streamlined player experience. And um, I think the key innovations that we discussed for multiplayer, those all exist across Warzone 2.0 as well. So we're, we're bringing it back, it's all connected, it's the same world, and I think the players are gonna love it. Oh my good God, real excited about this one. Uh, God, again, there's a lot in this one, Jack. Uh, where do we go from here? <laughs> so MW2 and Warzone 2 have been developed side by side since the beginning, right? Since we started down this road, and they're part of the same universe. Like Stephanie said, they share the same mechanics, the same weaponry, and even more than that. But the centerpiece of all this, of course, is the new map that we've been working on since 2020 with teams across the globe. Um, it brings together our philosophies on map design. It brings together new technologies in order to do it, and lots and lots of artwork to make it happen. And we've learned so much from players experiencing Verdansk and playing in Verdansk over the, the first few years of Warzone, and we're really excited them for them to land in Al Mazra with their squad. There's a wide variety of points of interest for players to explore in this map, and we're really looking forward to seeing everybody in there. Oh, here we go, a brand new map to explore and traverse. I cannot wait. Stephanie, let's take a look. That's right, Miles. Welcome to Al Mazra. This is our new map for Warzone 2.0. It is a really interesting mix of geography. It is expansive desert settings with a mix of industrial areas, towns, a city, and of course, water. It looks way better on this screen than it did on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you're gonna find a lot of really cool elevation, rocky peaks, 
caves, subterranean spaces. This map is beautiful, and it's actually the biggest BR map that we've ever made. And um, I am so excited for all of our streamers here to jump into Al Masra later today. It's huge. Look at the size of that thing. Uh, cool. Okay, so that was a big picture, and it's a great way to see it from a sort of top-down layout. But uh, let's take a better look at some of these points of interest. So when we set out to create these spaces, the team works to make it feel like a real space, right? So that there's infrastructure in between all the different, what we call, points of interest along the map. And if you're paying attention, you might even see a few that seem pretty familiar out there as well. Um, and so as the team works through these, they're trying to find some variety on each uh, point of interest to make them, them something that the players will want to drop in and get the particularity of that single point of interest and find the place that they want to drop and where they want to play, whether it be a higher level elevation observatory at the center of the map whether it be the big city that's up the top right and whether they want to explore that or whether they want to work in some of our POIs where we have water intersecting with ge with geometry here so we have in this one uh, Ooh, that oh, looks familiar, that does familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and there's a river system that goes through all of this. So you'll be able to catch in a boat and drive between the different POIs. <laughs> Here's one of our favorites, Sawa Village, which is... That's my favorite. ...colloquially yeah. called Sunken Town. I mean, I love to swim, so you find me there. Absolutely. Um, I'm curious what you guys think, Jack and Joe, on what the hot drop will be today, right? We've been talking about this the last couple of days. This is our first time seeing other people who are not us play Warzone 2.0. And so I'm just very curious where you think everyone's going to immediately drop today. I, I, I think some people are going to drop to Observatory just to go go back to home, you know? Go <laughs> yeah. <have some> They're <laughs> it, coming home. It's always nice. You're moving through the map, and you kind of hit a spot, and you're like, wait a second. I've been here before. I know what this, this is. is. <laughs> you have all these flashbacks. <laughs> hey, yeah, there's a lot of nuggets in there for some old uh, Modern Warfare reason, fans. Yeah, I'll say Corey. I think yeah. that's going to pop off. <laughs> I think people will land around the edge so they stay in as long as possible in this match. But oh, smart. We have some news for our edge of the map players yes, coming up. <laughs> Ooh, all right, guys. Well, the map looks absolutely gorgeous, and I can't wait to watch our streamers here uh, drop in early in an alpha build later on today. Okay, so moving on to the gameplay, uh, we've got this beautiful space to play in. How do all of these multiplayer elements we've talked about a little bit earlier, how do they fit into Warzone 2.0? I mean, the super simple answer is all the stuff we talked about in multiplayer, the stuff you saw in the multiplayer trailer, that's all in Warzone, right? It's all integrated. So that tactical camera works in Warzone. That decoy mine works in Warzone. Like, it's all of it's been built from the ground up for both. The slide, the dive, the water, like. More swimming. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this is a great taste of some of the water combat. I can't wait to go full Captain Mill. You know, Apocalypse Now coming out of the water, knifing people. I mean, this just looks. Yeah, the rendering team made some work. So you come out, you're looking all wet. Yeah. See the caustics on the bottom. Yep. I, I'm not even sure what caustics oh. are. I, <laughs> I have no idea, but it sounds great and it looks incredible. You can see the armored patrol boat coming by there with its two turrets. It's There's some cool stuff. So I'm glad you brought up vehicles. Uh, Steph, you touched on vehicles a little bit earlier. What can we talk about? Uh, you know, we've seen boats, we've seen tanks, we've seen all sorts, Jack. What have we got? So we've implemented a new physics and handling model for the vehicles. So some vehicles are heavier, some will slide more, have more traction or less traction. And as you're driving them around and you're encountering them and other squads are playing with them, you can choose to shoot off the tires to kind of impact their handling. You can have them, re they react to explosives differently based on their weight. So if you're in a heavy armored 4x4 and you get hit by an RPG, it's going to kind of bounce a little bit, but not quite take the hit as a small sedan. Um, you can also choose with your squad to be rolling into a POI and somebody jumps out on the roof, somebody leans out the window, and suddenly you get yourself a lot of firepower driving into the POI. Of course, that vehicle needs to survive for quite some time in the map if you want to keep using it to go from point to point. Um, and vehicles will run out of gas, or at least most of them will, um, will <laughs> run out of gas, and then uh, you can bring them to a gas station to fill them up. If your tire has been blown up, you can get out and repair it, or you can bring it to a gas station to get repaired as well. Oh and of my. course, We've got, you know, water vehicles. We've got a small boat. We've got the boat that Joe mentioned with the turret with at the, the turret. front, turret at the back. So you can have that little moment cruising up the river with your whole squad ready to rumble. Um, so yeah, there is so much love that's gone into these you vehicles. Forgot the this coolest game. vehicle. The coolest the, vehicle. The massive helicopter the that you can fly big, around. That's a moving chopper. platform with three doors mm -hmm. and people play. You can move a whole squad through the map. What? Re wreak havoc. It is mm -hmm. so cool. Oh my god. I mean, the fact that you can lean out of the window, you know, yep. grab your teammates, pile in a vehicle, actually, you know, do, 
engage in yeah. battle from the window, leaning out, unless shooting some, in combat. Unless somebody blew off your door. That won't. Well, oh, that that does complicate that's things, doesn't it? PTSD from uh, Joe killing me many times in our play tests. <laughs> well, I hope the uh, gas price is in our Mars are okay. I thought there's a lot going on in Warzone 2.0, and uh, my head is quite frankly spinning. Uh, what other massive changes um, have we got in store? Because it feels like there's, a, there's so much has changed. Is it still a gulag? Do we still have circles? Is it still gas? I know there are guns, but do we shoot them? What's happening? What do you want to jump into first? Oh, Stephanie, so go ahead. We've we made some pretty sweeping changes, I think, to the high-level components of, of Warzone 2.0 to continue providing players with both a dynamic and rewarding VR experience. But Warzone 2.0, you're going to hear it over and over again today. It's about fun. This is about playing with your friends, having fun, you know, friends new and old. Maybe you're making them a game. And I think one particular feature that I cannot wait to see the streamers <laughs> Engage with will be our prox chat. Yes. Uh, so it's coming. It will be in Warzone, and I, I, I there is going to be some amazing clips. <laughs> but um, I think Joe can uh, tell us a little bit more about looting in, about looting. in Warzone 2.0. I'm, I'm listening to that. The streamers yeah, love prox chat. <laughs> yeah, they're like, yes. Um, you know. In looting in um, Warzone 2.0, we still have the humming crates, you know, you can still travel around and listen for those. We still have the loose loot on the ground, but we wanted to add a layer of learnability and, and logic to our looting, right? So if, you, if you're outside, if you're a little kid, you fall down, you hurt your knee, and your mom's going to go inside, go to the medicine cabinet and get you something to a Band-Aid, Neosporin, whatever. So that's our looting. If, you're, if you need health <laughs> items, you can hit a bathroom in a building and there'll be a medicine cabinet, you can open it up. Um, if you want to get loadout items, um, there are these hidden caches throughout in between the POIs that are in ground and you can memorize where they are because they're always there. So you can kind of start to develop these paths through the map of how you loot. And there's this logic applied to looting. You know, you can find toolboxes that will have grenades and things in them. Um, and you find these other crates that are kind of like, it's as if the, the military that occupied the space came through and dropped off military items. Those crates are always there. So you can always have this reliable layer to looting. Incredible. This sounds really exciting. We go on a road trip through our Mazarin, quite literally, like have a, a route we plan, hit the gas, gas station, up, yeah. gas snacks. up, yeah, pick up snacks, pick up ammo and all sorts. Okay, cool. So what about circle mechanics? I mean, this is obviously uh, a huge component of BR's joke. Yeah, I mean, the circle's been a staple of BRs. It's been really hard to move away from it. So we kind of talked about what could we do to mix things up with the circle. So we've got this new mechanic where the circle can actually split, almost like a cell splits, into two, three, or even four circles. And then those circles kind of close down. And what it does is it segregates teams, and you have these micro battles in those circles. And at a certain point, you're like, OK, we've cleared out our circle. We think we're good. And then those circles merge. They come back together. And you know you have this very directed fight of, like, as the circles moving you're like gearing up in buildings you're like here we go it's about to kick off and as soon as those circles hit you have that final fight so it's another kind of like twist in the gameplay that we feel like is a cool world event that would happen like all oh, the circle splitting we need to do x crazy get in the car we're yeah. going now <laughs> go all right so apart from, apart from circle splitting uh what about the gulag is that still around i mean there's so much change man i mean i'm ready for it but Joe, what do we got the gulag you know we've been experimenting with we've tried some crazy things with the gulag, <laughs> uh, but the, the, the current version of the Gulag that we, we have running right now, where we're excited people to play, is you're not in there alone. You actually have this temporary alliance with another opponent in the map, and you guys, you have to work together, and if you can defeat the other team, you can get out. And after that, you guys are enemies again. But for that moment, it's like, all right, we need each other, let's do this. You use the proximity chat to talk to each other. <laughs> And the other thing we've been playing around with is you may see a little bit of an AI presence in the gulag. So you kind of you have to be on your toes. Like you're working with an enemy. There might be an AI here. You're picking up weapons. Um, and we're excited for people to try it. And, and yeah, we're going to get feedback today too. Yeah. And and like Joe said, we've we've been through some pretty wild iterations of the gulag, which I will not reveal yeah. here. But uh, there's there's a lot in store. <laughs> uh, there certainly is a lot in store. Um, Jack, I have heard uh, of a new concept coming to Warzone 2.0 called Strongholds. That will include AI that may impact how players get their weapons, etc. Uh, uh, can you clue me into what that's all about and if it's even true? Absolutely. Um, so strongholds are reinforced buildings that the, uh, that the AI is occupying inside Al Masra in BR. And the players can choose whether or not they want to engage with them and assault them to get cool rewards, including free loadout items, which is one of the new ways that we're adding for players to get their hands on their best weaponry. Um, we've worked really hard to bring in AI into, at scale into Warzone 2, and you're going to encounter them in multiple modes in different ways. In BR specifically, they're in these strongholds, and if you get to a stronghold, you can find the location of a black site, which is going to have even cooler stuff in it, and you can fight your way from one to the next. 
Um, but in other modes, you're going to find the AI occupying large portions of the map and just kind of protecting different POIs in different ways. Unreal. Okay, so we've all heard the rumors that Warzone 2.0 is going to have some very, very interesting new modes. Uh, would you care to confirm or deny Stephanie Snowden? It's finally time. <laughs> I have read about some new modes on the internet recently, <laughs> but one of the most exciting things about Warzone 2.0 is confirmation that an all new sandbox experience is coming at launch. I am happy to announce DMZ, Call of Duty's extraction mode will arrive with Warzone 2.0 at launch later this year. I played DMZ for the very first time on my first day at IW and to this day playing it nonstop, the possibilities with this game mode blow my mind. So DMZ. I can also confirm that DMZ is real. <laughs> but we're not going to go into depth on it today because we do have to keep some stuff in reserve. What I can tell you, though, is we've created a rich sandbox where you can define your own win condition. You infiltrate Al Masra, you accomplish your goals, and then you decide to extract when the time is right. It is played across the whole map, and the AI is occupying large sections of the map, and they are lethal opponents, and they do command your respect. You have to watch out for them. You have to work with your team. They patrol areas, they occupy strongholds, and they'll reinforce based on players' actions. And then on top of all this, you can choose which mission you want to accomplish, or you can chase after a variety of, of activities in the world. And you can play this differently depending on your playstyle. You can go loud, like I always do. You can go quiet, or you can hunt other players or avoid them entirely. Or you could just decide, hey, I'm going to explore the secrets of Almazar and see what's there. Loot up, exfil. It's 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 totally up to player choice there, and um, I'm I'm really excited about the full scale of what we're delivering for this chapter. And we want players to have an amazing experience in Warzone 2.0. We've been listening to the conversations in the community, specifically around small maps, ricochet, anti cheat, ranked play, and beyond. And Trust me, although we're touching on some of the core updates to the overall Warzone 2.0 experience today, and mostly focusing on BR, there will be more news to share over the coming months. This is only the beginning for Warzone 2.0. Okay, I need Warzone 2.0 and DMZ in my life ASAP. Stephanie, when? Warzone 2.0 will be free to play for everyone on November 16th with the start of season one across Modern Warfare 2. Mark your calendars, that's about two weeks uh, after, <laughs> after Modern Warfare 2 launches. Um, and we had 125 million players in the original Warzone. And I cannot wait to see all of you and hopefully more of you in Almazra for this experience. And you will have a chance to see a Warzone 2 Battle Royale Alpha playtest happening right here behind us very, very soon. Yeah, the streamers are hot to trot. They're raring to go. Uh, we will see all of you in Al Mazar on November 16th. But don't go anywhere just yet. Stick around, because when we come back, you'll see just what Warzone looks like when it's built up from the ground for mobile. You're not going to want to miss this, I promise. Then, after that, we have live gameplay coming at us with all of our friends set up across the each and every Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer. We've got Warzone 2.0, Battle Royale. We've got Warzone Mobile. It's all happening here, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go too far. Call of Duty Next, brought to you by the GMC Hummer EV Pickup, the world's first all-electric super truck. Intel, built for the next generation of gaming. Squad up sooner with Xfinity Rewards. Get early access to Modern Warfare 2's open beta. Jack Lynx, squad up with Sasquatch. Jack Lynx is good with it. Eureka Ergonomic leading designer in gaming furniture and proud partner of Modern Warfare 2.
What a jam-packed day we've had here so far. We got Warzone 2.0 and Modern Warfare 2 already good to go. But finally, we're hitting something new here. Coming into mobile, we got Warzone Mobile 2 here for you. It's me, Beef Mommy, and I couldn't be more excited to be here with none other than Chris Plummer. And Chris, what do you have for us today? That's right. Today we are proud to introduce Call of Duty Warzone Mobile. Yeah. This is the real thing and it's on your phone. For the first time ever, you can drop into Call of Duty Warzone from wherever life takes you. Let me quickly point out the gameplay you're seeing today is still alpha, so it's only going to get better. And for Warzone fans, you will recognize this drop sequence right away. I mean, honestly, it just gives me so much nostalgia, but wait a minute, Chris. Is that the legendary Verdansk? You know, this is where Warzone gameplay was born, and we're bringing the legendary Verdansk map to mobile for the very first time from its hallmark vistas and these dense urban areas. They're just so much fun to play in. Wide open fields, ready for battle, and intimate close quarters combat environments. There's so much variety in Verdansk. It's famous for good reason teaming with fan favorite locations like Boneyard and Superstore, even TV station. Well, I'm getting classic Call of Duty Warzone flashbacks here. Can you tell us more about the gameplay? Or you know what, maybe just give me your phone real quick. Maybe I can see for myself, no? <laughs> you know, the team has a passion for delivering the most authentic Call of Duty experience possible for mobile devices. From the way you aim and move to the weapon handling and the control responsiveness, all these critical little details combined to make Call of Duty Warzone Mobile feel best in class. We've made sure that the physics, the feedback, the sights and sounds, all those essential little touches are smooth and accurate. It's about creating an experience that's so true to form, you can imagine feeling that dirt compressing under the soles of your boots with every move. Or imagine those tiny shock waves of recoil moving through your entire body with every shot. In Warzone Mobile, these are the kind of details that we care about that make the combat feel airtight and authentic. That makes me really emotional, Chris. And you know, it sounds like everyone's paying attention to detail and it's finally paying off. Now, when I think of Call of Duty Warzone, I think about strategy. Absolutely, there's a lot more going on than pure gunplay. For example, when you're out there exploring the map and evading the gas circle collapse, you can try to sneak up on another player and pull off a finishing move. It's like ultimate bragging rights. And if you're feeling more strategic, you and your squad, they can complete contracts, use that cash at buy stations. There's a ton of variety there, including lots of different abilities like bringing back a fallen squad mate. Now, that contract economy, it adds a ton of depth and strategy through risk and reward. I really like that you brought that up because if you're talking about risk and reward, I think about the kill streaks. I think about the gulag. Are they going to be there too? Yes. <laughs> Everything you come to expect from Warzone, it's going to be there, especially kill streaks. This means you can deploy your big stick of choice, like you know, a precision airstrike. You might be able to wipe out an entire squad with it. So not so fortunate for them, but they're not necessarily down for the count either because we have the gulag. So here players can fight for a second chance. So when you go down, you get to fight one-on-one -on -one with another down player and you can earn your way back into battle. This is how Warzone Mobile plays out on a truly massive scale, unlike anything we've ever played on mobile before. For this reason, we're pushing way past the envelope on high player counts to make sure each match is jam-packed with our signature style of combat. So we are supporting up to 120 live players in the single match. Wait, 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 hold on. Did you just say 120 players? Or do you mean bots? Because it seems like in Battle Royale games on mobile, they're usually loaded up with boring bots. Well, we believe it's critically important and a lot more fun to play with real, live, human opponents. And that is our focus. So for anyone who's tired of playing with nothing but bots, we hear you. We're talking up to 120 real players ready to hunt you down with real human skill and real human emotions. That is Call of Duty Warzone Mobile. And we hear you in the crowd. Everyone's excited and absolutely it is huge. And I don't think there's a game on mobile that can top that in terms of real player count, of course. But how are you able to even pull that off? 
We can support real player counts at dramatically higher scale than we've ever seen in other Battle Royale games on mobile because Warzone Mobile is running on advanced, unified Call of Duty technology. This is the same shared tech behind the console and PC versions of Warzone 2.0. It gives us a ton of advantages, like these incredibly high player counts, authentic Call of Duty combat and gameplay systems, and it opens the door to a much more connected experience across all platforms. So when you say more connected, does that mean that Warzone Mobile will share content and features that will be in the console and PC version of Warzone 2.0? Exactly. Delivering a deeply connected experience, it's been a strategic pillar from the beginning of development. Now, we know that your time is precious, and your investment in playing is now recognized across Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2.0, and Warzone Mobile. So wherever you're playing Call of Duty, it is time well spent, including on mobile. Even your friends list and chat are shared across platforms, so you can stay in touch with your friends, whether they're playing on console or PC or mobile, wherever they choose to play. I mean, that is so exciting. I totally get that. Now, one of the coolest benefits of having this kind of connectivity is that Call of Duty Warzone Mobile is loaded up with the same authentic Call of Duty weapons and operators you'll recognize from Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2.0. And whatever you get from the Battle Pass, you will see it on console or PC. It'll also be there on your mobile device too. And the other way around works as well. I really love to hear that. And as a matter of fact, I saw some of the same weapons and operators being shown earlier today in Call of Duty Warzone 2.0. Are you aiming to make it exactly the same on all platforms? You know, that's a great question. So the team's incredibly excited about how deeply connected and authentic the experience is in Call of Duty Warzone Mobile. And we'll continue to adapt the best content and features and innovations created across the franchise. But at the same time, we recognize that mobile is a very unique platform. Mobile has its own flavor, advantages, and player expectations. Sounds like the game will be tied into the Call of Duty franchise pretty nicely. And will there be mobile-specific events or content that is unique to Warzone Mobile? Yes. Above all else, the team is committed to ensuring Warzone Mobile is a world-class, mobile-first experience right down to its core. Controls are a huge part of it. It just needs to feel natural on the device, intuitive, and, you know, native to the platform. A lot of it comes down to tuning, and this is why we are supporting synchronous cross-play between iOS and Android platforms exclusively on mobile, and we're avoiding the imbalance that comes with cross-playing between mobile devices and consoles, or mobile to PC. This allows our teams to deliver the best possible mobile gameplay experience with a unified feel, and by doing this, we don't need to compromise the tuning for any platform. This ensures a level playing field and more fun for everyone. Now, keeping those controls balanced for all player types, it's super important. So whether you're the hardest of hardcore mobile pros, or maybe you're a console first player that's sneaking in an extra match during your lunch break, even brand new players to the franchise who need a little help getting into the flow of the game, we are committed to providing the most robust control options anywhere for a pick up and play experience that's accessible to all of our players. I love that accessibility, and that means all my friends can get in on the action for a change, but how do they sign up? Well, it's time to get your mobile devices ready because I'm super excited to announce that starting right now, you can pre-register for your free download in the Google Play Store. Signing up means that you can be among the first to play when the game launches next year. We look forward to seeing everyone in Call of Duty Warzone Mobile. Ah, with that being said, hey, we got Ferg on the horn and I think he's literally the first one to pre-reg. Ferg? Hey guys, Ferg here, and I am thrilled to be one of the first to pre-register for Call of Duty Warzone Mobile. And now, you can too. Scan the QR code at the bottom of the screen to be among the first to draw. Tell your friends, because the more pre-registrations we drive, the more rewards we can earn. Like special weapons, vinyls, and emblems. Plus, if we reach the top milestone of 25 million pre registers, we're going to unlock a super cool secret reward you're not going to want to miss. What are you waiting for? Sign up using the QR code below.
We are back. It's Miles here, joined by Maven, Alicat, and Nameless Studio. What, what? Oh, guys, <laughs> the adults have left us alone on the desk, and now it's our time to have some fun. I don't know about you guys, but uh, okay, it's been a pretty litty day so far. Though. Yeah. Where do we even start? I mean, and uh, dude, mobile, bro. It's a so, new era of Call of Duty. Listen, Miles, I've been addicted to Call of Duty for over a decade. You're telling me I could be in the airport playing Warzone now, back in <laughs> for dance? That's lit. Also, Al Mazra looks absolutely incredible. Oh, it's insane. All right, there's no shortage of crazy stuff coming my way. Ali, yeah. I mean, lay it on me. Multiplayer for Warzone, for, for Modern Warfare 2, insane. It's incredible. We actually got to load up with some of the players yesterday in a little bit of a pre-test, and loading into Gunsmith 2.0 was actually so aesthetically pleasing, and I think everybody at home, once they also get their hands on it, they're going to love it just as much as we do here. Truly. Uh, Maven, my good, my good friend, you've played more Warzone than most people on the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah, How are you feeling? No, eight hours a day for years, it feels like. It, it just seems fresh, man. The map, like everything about it, triple circles, uh, the water, the boats. I mean, I was like kind of the proximity mind king for a while there, but they see them under vehicles trying to blow them up and set booby traps. And now you're telling me I could do them in not only land, but also the sea. I'm with it. It's going to be something, man. We really have seen a lot so far today. Uh, we've seen what? Warzone Mobile Course multiplayer there and a uh, bit of Warzone 2.0. Cannot wait. But guys, time to get into business. Let's now get into the command center. This is it. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the command center presented by Xfinity Rewards. We're going to be rolling the show through all day today. Xfinity customers, they can start playing Modern Warfare 2 sooner with Xfinity Rewards. Visit xfinity.com slash rewards to get your code for early access to the open beta. It's free and it's easy to join. Guys, I mean, every time I sit down, I take a breather. I'm like, there's so much. But first and foremost, guys, before we get into this one, so many streamers here. We need to give yeah. a big shout out to Intel, who's powering all of the streaming PCs here today. Massive shout out to those guys. Clint, there are two PCs on every desk. Explain. I, I couldn't believe it. Cloxy is here. Like, the fact that he actually made the trip out, I figured they have to have something special. The fact that you have a dedicated PC to the streaming side and to the gameplay side, and it's set up for this many people, Intel, thank Ridiculous. you. Ridiculous. Incredible. It's Ridiculous. Incredible. Uh, we're actually almost ready to get into the gameplay, guys. I mean, Ali, you teased it a little. Yeah, you just played, a little. We <laughs> a little, yeah. We played a ton of have an accent, too. You did. I'm getting mocked here. <laughs> <laughs> My bloody desk. We uh, we got to play a tiny bit yesterday. Yes. It was pretty fun. But uh, now we get to watch 200 streamers, uh, some of the world's finest, quite literally from almost every part yeah. of the planet, coming together here in this crazy top secret location. What can we expect? It's going to get loud. It's going to get <laughs> incredibly loud. Yesterday, it was loud. And I believe like not even everybody had shown up yet. So now right. that we have a full building of all of these creators, all of these PCs, I'm expecting people to get up and start screaming, Miles. It's going to be insane. Clint, we heard courage uh, from like headphones on. He can be heard from space. Oh, oh yeah, no, 100%. Like Bobby Pop, if he's on a sub train or something, Lord knows what that's going to sound like. But. My boy, twist, my boy, Tyler Blevins, Ninja here as well. <laughs> but like, I just, I, I think this is a testament to how pumped up everyone gets about oh, yeah. Call of Duty every yeah. year. Oh, yeah. Like the fact that there are this many big name streamers in attendance, we're going to see some incredible gameplay, go through the various modes. I mean, this is going to be, uh, this is going to be a real treat. It really is. I mean, and you've been around a long time in the Call of Duty world. In this venue right now, we've got streamers and players from, you know, all across North America, all, you know, South America. We've got players all over Europe, Japan, Australia, it's you wild. name them. We're all players, over here. Mobile everywhere. players everywhere. Yeah. What is, how do you describe the vibe in the room right now? I mean, it's just incredible. It's a bunch of homies who love Call of Duty all <laughs> in one room oh, getting ready yeah. to grind. And, you know, I was talking to them earlier. I was walking around doing the round, saying what up to everybody. They're going hard, right? Like, I was talking to some of the Warzone guys, Repos. He's like, I'm here to fry. Zuma's ready to go. So oh. I'm interested to see them with these new weapons and the gunsmith, what they come up with, especially our new game modes like Prisoner. It's going to be lit. Listen, as much as they're here for their love of Call of Duty, they're also here because they want that banger clip. Like, everybody oh, wants yeah, it. You, you know, like, you're trying to go out and fry some of these big names, get a clip out on social, your YouTube, whatever it's going to be. So yeah, I'm sure people are going hard in the paint or falling to their desk at their Tim. I'm sure we're going to have a couple of those. I'll we'll go a little bit of that later on. I think we're actually ready to hop into gameplay. Dr. Lupo, one of our first here, and uh, he's already down and out, but we are playing, I believe this is Hardpoint and Mercado, Nameless. Yeah, you know, I didn't get to play this map yesterday, but one thing I just want to point out with this game is it's a lot more vibrant than some of the MW yeah. games that we've had in the past. There's so many more colors, and that's something that I always enjoy, uh, especially with Call of Duty, is when it's more vibrant and you can see more on the map. I think sometimes you go dev to dev and yeah it's like you have like your more realism like your yeah. grays and brows some will have a little bit more color but like this map in particular yeah the second we saw like the fly through of this yeah I mean, it just looks gorgeous it yeah. really does oh and i'm not that i had any concerns about the visual side of it because they're knocking out of the park every year but it's just aesthetically pleasing it is 
It's very, very pretty. That is, of course, Dr. Lupo. Uh, you, can, you can watch him stream this live. Uh, every single member of, of the of the crazy, I don't even have a name for it, the stream pit here, uh, Todd Next, all of them live on their own channels and unreal, man. Yeah, it's unreal. I mean, all these guys are going hard. You can see he's locked in. Uh, talking a little bit about the game and the movement, though. When I first hopped on yesterday, the movement felt so much different than Call of Duty's in the past. You know, it's not that slide cancel. You got to complete your slide. The dive mechanic, it plays out so much different. Uh, when you're going into a gunfight, you can dive out of a window. Miles, it was a lot of fun. We were getting into the mix. We really did get into the mix. I also, I'm going to tell this now on air in front of God knows how many people, but last night, Ninja wasn't in the venue. I played on his setup. He <laughs> wasn't quite here yet. And I found there is an in-game, like, whisper feature. So I was sending messages to other creators <laughs> as Ninja talking horrendous, <laughs> like horrendous, horrendous trash talk. All very good natured, friends of mine, you know, but I'd be kind of weird to get that from Ninja, right? <laughs> yeah, does yeah. Ninja know you did this? He has no idea. I walk, past, I walk up uh, and no. slap him. I walked past him today and I was like, good morning, dude. How you been? He's like, hey, man. Not he a single no word, idea. Ali, not a word. But not a word. I actually, I actually got into a game against you specifically. I was I was on, I believe, Nate Trust streaming account. I don't believe that he's here today, but I was I was getting disrespectful with some people <laughs> on the map. And I believe that you were in my last game, and the second I killed you, you left. I, oh, I remember hey, looking hey, at the leaderboard hey. and you That know, wasn't me, you that was Ninja. A quitter. <laughs> a quitter, Miles. That was Ninja. Over to Courage now, he's having a, a good time. And uh, you know what? <laughs> 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 Listen, he is, as much as he's like a fun, good loving, like everyone takes a jack, it's just like this great nature guy. He is one of those competitive human beings oh, I've ever met. Like he gets pissed, bro. Passion. Raging passion. And look, it's me on the right hand side. No, it's not. It's me. <laughs> And I will have to say, with, to test to what Ant was talking about earlier, about the game mechanics, something else that I noticed that I don't feel like I felt in other Call of Duty games mm -hmm. is how kind of realistic the movement with your gun is, if that makes sense. Like, there's obviously always going to be recoil. Your attachment's always going to mess with that. But when you peek corners and stuff, the way your gun moves with you is very, very realistic. And I think that's going to be something a lot of these players are going to notice and have to get used to very quickly. And you saw a taste there of uh, when you're spectating a player, you get that kind of like over-the-shoulder, like tactical camera review and it just has this insane level of like it's like realism but like it just looks so exciting to watch and when you're you know enjoying like you know maybe seeing your teammates play or whatnot it, it just looks so cool it's a nice new feature here in the game uh, and sorry Clint, this is the new knockout mode I don't think you you might not I know what this means. I, I haven't seen this one yet. I haven't, oh, I I haven't played, played it yet. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I mostly, I, I was watching some of the guys play. I just wanted to kind of live react and enjoy it. Yeah. Like, there's so much new stuff. Like, I've just been looking forward to seeing what's going to be on the table. But let's see if Jack can actually step up this time. No, no not going to happen. Just getting destroyed. <laughs> I'm sorry. Superior positioning, Jack. You are awful. Oh, was that too hard? Oh, he's my no, oh, no, 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 no. Um, yeah. okay. He's doing the classic. He's going to the, a set. He's, like, <laughs> he's doing the classic. It was something else. It was something else. It wasn't, it wasn't. Oh, his fault. oh, my sensitivity or something? What is it? I, the, no, Jack. Wherever he's spectating, he's using my favorite SMG, by the way. Too. And I think that's the, what the hurricane. The hurricane. What do you yeah. think, by the way, he's about the. Ooh. Changes to gunsmith and now having five so, attachments and not having, you know, it's Yeah, amazing. so, you know, I saw the Romans <laughs> on Twitter and stuff like that. Uh, I think it's amazing, though. I mean, when we jumped into Modern Warfare in 2019, when they introduced the gunsmith, it was a lot to take in. But now everybody's familiar with it, especially grinding Warzone, switching up those attachments. And it's just a better version it of like that. Seems like a good middle ground, It's just right? a better like, version of that, right? Like, the gun moves around with you as you're in there. You can switch out all the different attachments. And, you know, for the class of weapon that you have, like, you can change it up. Turn a M4 into oh, an SMG. Like, I mean, that's, that's really cool. Ooh, this is, oh, that was nearly a snap. This that was is nearly six. close. Uh, one of the uh, yeah, the all-time greats in the competitive Call of Duty. One of the maybe maybe the if not the all yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah I, I don't know why I said it that way. I was, yeah, I, no, like the all-time great. Yeah. Ross, he's the greatest. But there we go. Swag now getting involved as well. And, and to your point of Ali about gunsmith, I mean, it's at this point in time obviously it's quite hard to recognize. But that is a part of the M4 platform right that's now. That's his primary weapon. Yeah, I mean, it's awesome. Like, you can switch it up. Like, you can make it into a sniper, I think, is what I heard <laughs> as well, right? So it's going to be crazy. Even with the AK turning 74U, uh, just make some crazy different loadouts. You know some of these guys, j God's going to have so much fun with that. Nine and a half hour long attachment video from j God. Oh, wait. God, you know, he's so excited about that. And I want to actually, I want to talk about the map aesthetics for a moment and, like, the layout. Is the rooftops, like, the new ledge, how you can jump and then you can hang off the side of the ledge. That was a new <laughs> thing that you can add into this game, 
you can jump from rooftop to rooftop and like you can jump further than you think and i found that out very quickly like i would get to an edge of rooftop and i was like i wonder if i can make this jump you <laughs> can make you ball. can nice. make the jump you can make it across like the map if there's tall buildings you can make it across the map without ever having to touch on the ground and i think for snipers that is going to be their absolute playground speaking of snipers pomage now who's having a great time here uh, i mean uh, we've seen a lot clint of, of the weapons so far but surely a sniper well, I, I, I heard Pamaj too. Like, I, I stepped up. I think it's when he was first walking in. He was walking with Rational into people, and he was like, I'm going hard, bro. Oh, yeah. He's like, I'm good. going hard. <laughs> I could just hear, like, the competitive. He's, 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 he's going hard. Right. <laughs> and this, is, uh, this knockout game is not going very well for the red team right now. Pamaj's team obviously winning this one. Again, secure the grab, the money bag, hold on to that bad boy. Oh, I forgot, friends. Here at COD Next, it's all going on. Mobile gaming oh, on side of your screen. Those. We've got all of it going on, really. A celebration of everything that is Call of Duty and even courage he may have just sworn. Do you see the, the gloves on the arm? Yeah, they're and yeah, professionals. The True professionals. <laughs> Wait, do I I probably need to get this? Right, I've been playing some COD Mobile, Diablo Immortal. Like I've been grinding more mobile games. I have my iPad and I'm loving it. Do I need to get a little thumb sleeves? Yeah. I, really I think you should, yeah. You know, sometimes it gets a little bit slippery. I need thumb sleeves. What are they called? Uh, I'm not thumb sleeve. You're in the right place to ask yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, is, there is an army of oh, professionals. Oh, I'm looking into that. No, that's actually an issue. It's like it's a little bit slippery, you know? <laughs> so they're playing some hardpoint here, and, you, you know, obviously, us coming from the esports side of things, we love hardpoint. Miles, we were talking about this morning. When there's a hardpoint and there's some elevation above it, you can dive into it, turn around, land on your belly, and yeah. absolutely yeah. rise. So, you know, there are some movement mechanics for, for you speed demons out there if you want to make some plays. Yeah, there's a lot of talks about, you know, the way slide works now, and of course, the dolphin dive is back. I don't think it's, a, we're not officially calling it the dolphin dive, but Jason's calling it the dive itself. I mean, it's a really fun mechanic. It's uh, it's fast. We get to see some gameplay with it. Uh, I've actually been walking around talking to some of the sort of the CDL pros. been like, hey guys, try to stop sliding. Try to dive a bit more. Come on, butters. Show us the dive. Show us the slide. Now we're looking for the right dive. Right out the window. Just dive out the window. Send it. <laughs> and all the windows are built to be divable through. Like, that's the way the game is. That's <laughs> what Joe was kind of saying, right? Like, it, they're seeing it so much in playtesting, and Nate goes into a window. Like, everyone <laughs> sends it out. So uh, you think about all the exciting moments you're going to have. Oh, here we go. Butters is going to be sniping there. That's the, so we have the Hurricane. She's running overkill. That's going to be one of the M4 platforms and the sniper on the other side. He's and we have the mechanic. Look. Uh, there we go. Testing things out. Trying to trying to find the sneakiest, yeah, fastest to see way across the map. Yesterday. I couldn't. I was trying to see if I could break the slide. <laughs> No slide well, that making. works out. Yeah, look at her face. Ooh. She's just like going around, <laughs> test out the movement. Someone just runs right in front of her. That works out. Give me a freebie. You know what I'm noticing on this map that I actually like a lot? Not as many doors. Just Not as many doors. I think in Some general areas. is yeah. the overall vibe. Uh, I mean, most of the maps we've seen so far are quite small, very fast paced. Again, Jeff talking about that, you've got a very distinct feel. It's just like the battle map is very large. Yeah. Way more intense action. Of course, there's like the invasion stuff. 6v6 is a totally different flavor. I mean, that obviously and yeah. excites us oh, more that, than that maybe it us. should most. Oh, I mean, we love it, right? Like, we, we're, we're here to see people go hard, uh, try to win, be competitive, and... Uh, Ooh, ooh. Okay. I don't think we're seeing a lot of elevation on some of these maps, too. You know, snipers are going to be in heaven. Yeah, I yeah. think it's uh, max two stories, I believe. I, I could be completely wrong there, but... <laughs> I hit it! Hit it! Also, look at that clip. little stock. Did you guys use the sniper yesterday? Yeah, right? No, I didn't. I used it for it's a like whole beautiful map. stock I've ever seen. It was so fun. I think we were in the same game, too. Yeah, I was in the back sniper. The I, I can't wait for the sort of like anime skins and stuff like that. My cute little stocks. Uh, of course, <laughs> skin, we can put skins on individual attachments now when it comes to making some very, this very handsome, handsome looking oh, weapons. Oh, Dylan's right. Yeah. Speaking of handsome. Oh, good. also, something we haven't talked about yet is the way the perks work. I actually. Oh, love, I love, I love, I love the perks. Because system. it reminds me of back in the day, the specialist, when you, as you get. Yep. Hills, you get more perks. As time goes on, you're gonna have two base perks. You can pick whatever you want. As time goes on, you're gonna get another perk. As Ooh. time goes on, you're gonna get an ultimate perk as well. So it's actually, a, it's completely new. Uh, they've redone it, and it's gonna be sweet. Well, yeah. the reason I think, I haven't, I haven't really played it yet to deal with it too much to see like how vastly different it makes the gameplay. But I know for a lot of us, when you're playing like the multiplayer experience, I feel like you get a couple perks you like, and you just sort of pick those. They're your go-to, yeah. you don't really think about it, right? Like, you figure that out in the first couple days or weeks yeah. of playing the game, those are your perks. Now it's like, I feel like there's more decision-making that goes into it, which I personally think is exciting. Now, I don't know what I'm going to be running. But, <laughs> but it, does, it does feel like they were saying, what was it, that, you know, the different type of classes they were trying to put? You have your rusher, kind of your more stealth yeah, yeah, type yeah. player, your sentinel. Like, they, they want to 
even if it's not like class based per se, like they want to kind of funnel it with that behind the perks. Yeah, right? I think that's pretty dope. But you can also make your own, so you can create it, pick your own two perks, your next one, and your ultimate. So you can, no, you know, figure out so, what you man. want. And yeah, uh, it's just nice like having that. like a rewarded game, especially it, when you're frying, getting that extra perk. It really does, you know, change. Where you start off with the base two, yeah. And you unlock one after you know a period of time. You, you get kills, you get points. Yeah. The game progresses slowly. So no matter how you're playing, you're going to get your perks eventually. But obviously, higher scoring game, you're gonna get more. And it's just really interesting again. And the perks are almost tiered. And again, Jeff and Joe will come on the desk later on and talk about this in way more detail. But the idea that like, yeah, the first two perks, they're fine. They sort of help out the gameplay. That mid-tier perk, way more sort of impactful. And that final perk, like a kind of like the super perk. That's not gonna turn you into Captain America, but it is gonna make you way more effective. I kinda wanna be Captain America now. right now. Taking Jeff and Joe's thunder. Symphony was just on screen, so. I mean, look at the wagon on that boy. <laughs> what? There it is. Right, listen, I'll picture there. Like, yeah, two million views on TikTok, something like that. Like it's, it. <laughs> it's impressive stuff. That's what you're watching? In your free time clip? Uh, yes, it might be. It might okay. be. I'm watching it's Brooke's too. TikTok, you know? She's very creative. This is uh, a Search and Destroy, a Call of Duty classic here on Farm 18. This looks cool. This is one of the maps that we saw in an Intel drop not too long ago. Ooh, let's go. So, uh, this is Symphony Spectating Ash Sanders. Yeah. And you know, of course, we're talking about like three lane maps. This is one of those maps that felt like a very good hybrid three lane map that does really, really well when it comes to a game mode like their Search and Destroy. Like you have your traditional outer lanes and they have their hidden corners and they have their ways. And then that middle is just pure chaos. It's kind of like a little bit of like, a, it reminds me of like a paintball range with all the walls and the corners that there are. So I, this is probably one of my favorite maps that we are playing right now in the beta testing. And as you can see, everybody is having so much fun on it. I mean, four and five, everybody's doing it's pretty a close okay. Game. It's a yeah. Yeah. Game. Yeah, yeah. Aiden has 14 kills. I just saw the kill board. He's on the other team. Aiden just realized he's on the stream that he's ready to get nasty. He's <laughs> going in. Oh, he's fully loaded. Look at the bottom. He's got all his perks. He is perked up. Hurt. Quite literally. Come on, Mason. Show me something special. He is flying. He that oh, fennec. wow. And That's oh, what we're oh, talking about. Oh, no. That's the Fennec. I was loving that one yesterday. Oh. Well, that thing turns, That's an OG weapon. That, that turns people in a super oh, close God. range, but Pornyhoff just gave him the business. Smoked him. Nice try, Mason. We still love you. Hurricane OP. Hurricane, Hurricane. It's, so, like, it's such a different look. Like, when we're spectating these players and they're having gunfight stuff, like, the way the player animations are, the yeah. sound effects, like, the game has just been... Like, it's everything we liked about MW19, all the stuff that was already there existing, and they've just yeah. they've just been... I mean, Salt Bay right yeah, on man. top, just just hammering oh. away. Sweet seasoning, oh. top to bottom. Oh. Well, and it was a close game, and now it's done. Swift, Another thing. He looked very sneaky, and then he was just evaporated. I gotta say, the bunny hop is back and forth. Oh, oh yeah. man, the oh, bunny yeah. hop is clean. Hey, yeah. We know Sam hey, Maru hey, Octane. Hey, gotta give him a shout hey, out. He's hey, gonna be bunny hey, hopping hey, all day. Hey, hey, hey. We got Myth on the screen here. What's he using? M4, I think. Again, it, it, looking at these weapons, oh. you know it's an M4, but the configuration he has. I was using the bigger sight, uh, the double. Uh, so I forget the name of it. Ooh, but I like the, the extra zoom. And of course, kill streaks. Cruise missile back. A lot of fan favorites, Clint. I mean, everything you would expect so from a modern warrior is there. Okay. We get to see one. Mid. Ah, that'll connect. Myth able to hit it. He's vibing right now. <laughs> but it's it's crazy. Like, yeah, yeah, bottom right, you were kind of hey, mentioning like how different the guns are. Yeah. The same type of gun is based on the attachments that it has as well. There's also uh, in in game settings where you can make your gun a little more narrow, a bit wider, further yeah. away. I mean, there's options, you know, just create that sort of visual. Look, you want the game to be as appealing as possible for you. Maybe you don't want the gun to be so big to obscure the view. Maybe I'm you're one of those players. Uh, settings, personally. Like, there is a to tweak of how I walk, right? There's a lot of settings in this game. I'm going to get lost in that for the entire first day, probably. Once campaign so hits, I'll spend about three and a half hours messing with settings and then getting yeah. that first mission. Well, I see Courage on a five street. That pop up at the top of the screen. It might have. Courage might be popping off. Oh, well, he just died there, so <laughs> take it back. Ooh. Come on, Swag. Swag's done. Hit it. Swag's ah! Yeah, this sub looks like it's it's dominant. Oh, so all the sounds and everything when you level up guns. And oh, yeah. Everything is there. I mean, it's, it's I, the... I wish everyone could experience just this environment, though. Like, as much as we're yeah. in the gameplay and stuff, how cool it's been. Because, like, a lot, of, a lot of these content creators, like, they're friends or they're familiar with each other. They play games online. But, like, it's not often you get them all in one place like this. And it has just been a vibe. Seeing everybody going up, some meeting for the first time. Like, yeah. I know Iceman and Isaac, we, we have interacted so many times on social. I've never met him in never person, him, dude. Yeah, we hugged wild. for a solid 30 seconds. It was beautiful. <laughs> And it just shows like how hyped people get for Call of Duty. No, I was telling yeah. you, I was like, I can't believe I still get this amped for Call of Duty after over 10 years. I don't think many things like bring everybody together like this. Yeah. It is uh, yeah. special. The beta starts tomorrow in case you've been living under a rock or if you've just joined the stream. Yeah, <laughs> one, of the, one of the two. One of the two. There's no in between.
User interface has been completely changed as well. Dead Silence available on that lower right hand side. Just a lot more sort of clean changes. Of course, the menu system, which you might not have seen here on the on the main uh, COD Next stream, but individual streamers seeing them going through weapon loadout, seeing the operators there. So many cool changes. A lot more of a streamlined experience. It's sexy. That's, that's not a lot of ways to describe it. I love that. Especially like when you click start, you go and you look at your loadout, your switch weapons. It looks good. You can see everything. It's just right in front of your face. You know exactly what's there. Uh, digestible. And that's what you need. It's such a fast paced game like Call of Duty. It's digestible. I also quite enjoy that like it doesn't obscure too much of the in-game screen. Yeah. So if, like, if I'm hitting pause, I'm checking stuff out, I still want to have some kind yeah. of like situational awareness sure. of in-game. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say in terms of balance of like ARs and SMGs, of course, this is all of our, like, our first peeks into it, but they've looked pretty balanced so far. Like the SMGs have been absolutely disgusting up close, whether the AR gets first shot or not. And at long range, the SMGs haven't been ripping as well. The recoil gets insane at that sort of range. So I feel like it looks like the gun balance as well, regardless of your attachments and what configuration you end up coming with, is fairly much I, I love that because I mean it just feels like sometimes it turns into this one gun that can do everything yeah. right? and, and I, I, I think everyone appreciates a little bit of variety like an well, AR that's feels like quite an AR literally what this game like is because you could change your gun up to whatever you want right so well, well in a way yeah but like I think Tally's point like there seems to be a little more separation between yeah. your Like, I haven't seen the right. do-it-all gun just yet. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, we saw Aiden, of course, on the Mountain Dew green carpet, like, I want a broken shotgun. <laughs> and I'm sure he can make it, but broken, we'll find out what that really means. Uh, of course, as the game you know, like develops. <laughs> he, wants, yeah, he wants a sawn off that kills people across map, that makes him move real fast. I mean, hey, who knows? Gunsmith is crazy. 2.0 even crazier. Well, I mean, we'll it, see if he can it do it. Wild. I mean, it, no matter how much work has gone into this, that, uh, we've got the nerds in the building, and this is where if anyone's going <laughs> to test some stuff, yeah. by, by Find some, you know, weird combination that yeah, turns a shotgun into a sniper. This is the crew that's going We've to do it. We've only scratched the surface. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've yeah, touched yeah. it for 20 minutes. Oh, what people are going to do with this gun. That's just not so, enough, is it, Miles? Not yeah. enough. No idea what these guys are going to come up with, but it's going to be crazy. I need a good sort of two to three hours to really uh, get Look at, look at Chef Tony. Yeah, look, this is one good. of the most famous Italian men in the world. Yeah. Makes Metal. a mean stromboli. We love him. Metal Boots on the building. He's got the M4. He's Metal gonna Boots. Run, he's going to run this class setup from now until the next two years. <laughs> we talked about <laughs> it. can be great to mess around with guns. Oh, Chris Crowder. I don't, listen, I'm not sure what's going on here. Chris has been uh, growing some sort of beard that's happening. For the first time that I've seen him, he's, he's usually very baby-faced. Now I, he's kind of going for some sort of supermodel type thing, or maybe like being a, a, a rapper, singer. I'm not handsome. Sure. He's a handsome he, he really is. Oh, he really is. A tiny little bit of a user interface there. If you hold a circle, whatever your sort of crouch button is when you're on a ladder, you can fast slide down it. So uh, that's going to get spicy and fight. Oh, by oh, oh, one. Oh, 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 he's on, he's on his feet. Outer. He's on his feet. The gouch. The gouch. Oh, man. We will be playing all day, friends. All day. You know what? The iron sights here are kind of clean. Well, I think this is great, too, for a lot of, uh, I mean, people like, you saw Zenny, you know, you saw Crowder, for those who don't know, you know, they work on the CDL side, you know, they're really in the midst of stuff during the season. They don't get to come to stuff like this that often and see all these content creators. I, I, I imagine they're in heaven. I've seen some of the tweets, just having a blast meeting a lot of different people. So as far as streaks goes, we, we haven't seen a whole lot. Obviously, Cruise Missile is there, Counter UAV, a classic, VTOL is going to be back. Uh, you know, everything, I mean, the Juggernaut is the, I think it's the final one and it looks crazy. And whoever that AFK player was, get a, <laughs> get a grip. You are live at COD next. Uh, but yeah, there's a ton of cool stuff. I mean, we're seeing Wilson's in there That's as well. That's what I was going to say. I love that. We're going to have a lot of fun. Chopper Gunner's back. Uh, there's, I mean, it's called, uh, I think it's called Air Support now, but it's uh, <clears throat> it's an AC-130. You know what I'm talking about, friends. There's a Chopper Gunner here as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to be seeing it all. Yeah, Miles, like, if we play against each other later today, when we get the free play, I'm getting a chopper. I think I'm actually locked on this desk all day. I would love to play more. <laughs> <laughs> after the, after the shooting's over, I think we can play more. Yeah, I think we, uh, once the once the curtains go down, we're going to dive on. <laughs> Can you hear the chain? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm visualizing your ankles just My tied, ankle. tied to the yeah, desk. We, I, they can wheel me in the chair, but it's hard to get down the stairs. <laughs> Here we go, another oh, cruise. Oh, man, how we doing? And what a shot. He got two. hat over the headset. He killed Nick Merckx. All right, we're going to oh, see, the see you later, Nick. So, so this is the uh, SAE. air support where you're saying. Yeah, this is it's, it's, it's kind, of a, kind of a lucky lightning strike. Oh, yeah, nice what shot. What is that what? thing? The Fennec. Or it's a custom one. Wait a minute. Longer range, maybe? But that looks wow. like the Fennec. Yeah, that's the Fennec Iron that, that boy don't recoil. What? All right, Breadman's already found a winner. Yeah, Bread's got Brrr. the game. Oh, my Whoa. God. It does recoil, but it, like, doesn't. But he's holding that thing down, though. But <laughs> yeah, he's the, all right. So going straight, he's on, he's on mouse, good. obviously, recoil, long range. You can manage oh, the Jesus. But it doesn't seem like there's a lot. Of, he's just putting them down. Yeah, cameraman, get in there real close. Show me the hands. Show me the hands. <laughs> oh, gun him. So we played this map yesterday in the 3P mode. That was yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. Of fun. Museum, yeah, this is this is a lot of fun. We saw a top down of this on socials recently, but there we go. Like, yeah, give me the hands. 
I hear all that sounds. So sad. That sounds that sounds scary though. Yeah. You hear that? That better be on my team. <laughs> I mean, he is one of the better aimers I've seen though. Like a lot of the tournament stuff where you're talking about mouse and keyboard players, like he is absolutely nuts with it. So not surprised to see him uh, finding some wins in the long range battles, but I got to see his recoil control. So what do you guys think about all these maps so far? What's your what's your what's been your guys' favorite? Miles? Honestly, yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like he's pulling down a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, honestly, I, no, this is museum. It, nice big central area, essentially three lanes. I mean, this is a, is a, a second story. We're about to go up there now. This is where okay. Breadman is. It, it's nice, man. We've got some decent lines of sight. Snipers are going to have a lot of fun here. We played hardpoint on this map. We played th prisoner rescue. Courage and I clutched up big time last night in like a 2v5. I had the prisoner on my back. I was sprinting. <laughs> and I can hear Jack picking up three, four kills. Let's go, baby! <laughs> Screaming. I'm there guy, sprinting. I'd, I'd be that guy on the team, too. I, I'd be carrying. Yeah. It was, it was great. It was really great. We had a lot of fun. There's a lot of cool, you know, the opening breaks and stuff. Like the, he's the on a 15 good. streak, by the way. Excuse me. Yeah, he was frying. He's uh, literally annihilating the lobby. Oh, yeah, let's stick with him. He's on 15 in a row. This Another cruise coming in. Bang. This is the Elgato replay uh, of how this all El started. Oh, he gets two again. Wait. Just ripping him. It's the same two people. No, sorry, this guy. Oh, this is a replay. Oh, is it? Yeah. I was about to say. Yeah, this is a he was on. Clean. He was on 15 in a row. I thought he got another one. I thought he wrapped his streaks. It's all good. Clean. You're, oh, you're, dude, I basically, just, I basically just pulled a symphony, dude, when he was casting the pregame lobby. Oh, and it was yeah, a good I thought he earned another one. Glorious. Oh. Well, last thing I saw was 15 streak. I was fired up for oh, my guy. So he put a, oh, so it's, it's an M4. His just sounds crazy. I think it's the dubbing of the audio. It might be his stream, yeah. but either way, <laughs> it's his stream. That boy is ripping metal. Uh, so, okay, kind of cool to see there on the bottom side of the screen for a moment there how the perk system works. He's already at his second tier of perks, uh, which I think was Spotter. 19 kills. Let's go, Breadman. And of course, he's working his way towards that final perk here in this uh, hard point. Yeah, it's not that crazy. I thought he wrapped streaks now, is it? He, like is he, he is <laughs> annihilating everyone. 20. He's farming. Can yeah, he's literally look? farming. Somebody kill Breadman. Wait, do you guys see the Lordy. movement though that I was talking about? Like how when you're moving, like your yeah. whole body, like it's a, it's different than other Call of Duty games. It's very hard to put into words, but once you get your hands on this game, like you can tell everything moves with you. Like yeah. usually the gun's fairly stationary, but like everything is moving with you at all times. And you can see it, so that's yeah, gonna, you like know, you can see. For it. more of the hardcore players, <laughs> yeah. the players are going out there and they're like jiggle peeking. Your hips and your head. Yeah, move like now. everything's going. So it's a little bit different when you play the three P mode. You can get a better understanding of like how that looks, and you'll see that a little bit later today. Just but like the physics of the character. The physics yeah, of the character yeah. has been reimagined, so it's different. So yeah, throwing those shoulders. You, you got to be a little careful. I mean, everyone's yeah. like Shakira out there throwing the hips around. You got to be very. I mean, if the animation. I've been is comparing so to Shakira. Yeah. I don't doubt that, but yeah. you got to look how smooth the animations can be, and ah, it's been so work. much fun so far. Oh, is this what it looks like to be on the other side of the bread man? Massive. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I was actually wondering. Wait, 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 wait. We're going to get up there and kick his ass. Oh. oh, I think that was Breadman. That was Breadman. Yep, yep, I believe that, that was, was Breadman. Bread He's got 25 kills. He's got the thing locked down. Just quick, get up there and get him. Just get, go back in there. I mean, this is this is going on the timeline for sure. Breadman's got clips for days. I mean, destroyers calling the streaks to the SAE above. What have we got here? We got a sniper. <laughs> just, I just need to imagine loading in, like trying to check everything out, run some different guns, and Breadman's just up top. <laughs> yeah, no, no, he, he just looked mode. dialed in. I don't think he said a word. <laughs> Hit it! Oh. Ah! Oh. ADS not quick enough there. Two posted up on the bridge, just shut them oh, down. But so he has the pistol on Miles. Remember we were playing with it? We turned into a fully auto sub yesterday. But yeah, thing. Wait, so, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so the, of course, Gunsmith is ridiculous. Two point yeah. You can turn your sidearm into something pretty mean. And then, of course, the ledge hang mechanic. I'm hanging on ledge. Clint, you were singing the Spider-Man song earlier. Hey, man, yeah. not too f if Spider-Man carried a, a, a Glock, yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it is crazy to see, like, how much damage you can do with that thing. And, and, and just, I mean, it's something that we have to learn now as Call of Duty players. I have to now look at funny ledges and see where players are. Yeah. I was also trying out some of the field upgrades yesterday for the you know, short amount of time that I did have. I tried the camera one. It was so interesting. Just, like, throw it down, go hide in the corner. You can see when they're pushing at you. It's, you hold, your own, you hold your own flank at yeah, that point. Yeah, you got your own choke points. That's great. And again, and another thing. Go! Oh. oh. Isaac, uh, he nearly got both of them there. And of course, Isaac, one of our streamers coming in from uh, from Europe, made the long trip across. Yeah, I was wondering how many people we had here internationally. I've casted over him in a bunch of Warzone tournaments. He's made some deep runs. The guy's a monster. But as he's just trying to hit some snipes and try some of the different weapons out, Bredman's uh, kind of been annihilating the lobby. But there we go. Another shot going to hit. Bang! 
I'm already really liking the sounds of these guns. I'm liking yeah. the right. crosshairs look. Like, this is something I cannot wait to get on. Oh, hello. Threadman just got a three piece, and yeah. then Isaac followed up with the fourth in the feed. That was very satisfying. <laughs> oh, yeah. They are just tearing them apart, it feels like. What's that field upgrade he has there? I can't tell from that. Uh, that could be the portable radar. Oh, that might oh. be, yeah. So that little bad boy uh, kind of gives you sort of a local, a local sort one. of UAV, but it, the radius isn't obviously great, but yeah. hey man, in a pinch, I'll take it. Dude, look at that bullet hit, just hit like right on the panel of the window, so the first shot didn't hit. Second one, that'll go through. I was using this yesterday, it's a powerful shot. It Got feels, a couple it feels oh, oh, he's dead. oh wait, Ooh. somebody saved him! Oh my god! It was bread man. Oh my god. Nick Merckx was trying to assassinate <laughs> Isaac. All right, get us out of there. Over to crowd. Here's the Fennec. He runs so quick on this thing. Yeah. I mean, look how different this POV seems versus like the sniper POV. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. you're moving. You're I'm going. That. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. Matter, though. okay, Sean J. Sean Fries. Again, this is that sort of idea of like the different, uh, maybe not play styles, but kind of like player attributes here, yeah. what you're going for. I'm, you know, Crowder is obviously, he's way more aggressive, you know? He might be hitting flanks soon, but the way he's kicked himself out. Whoa. He's in the mix. I think something that you could learn a lot uh, that all these creators are going to learn very quickly is there a lot more pass on the map than you know about. Like on this one specifically, behind Crowder, there's an underground passageway where one of the flags are, and like I didn't even know you could go down there. Like I had to wrap the entire building before I figured out how to get underground. So there's a lot more angles and a lot more passageways than I think a lot of these creators are expecting, and that's why we're going to see possibly a lot more assassinations, <laughs> possibly a lot more credi corners, and people just popping out of literally nowhere. Crowder is locked in. And that is the power of the Fennec. That player did stand a chance. Yeah, he's in the perfect area to use this weapon. It's like going out, getting peaks, yeah. close range combat. It's a lot of fun to use this one, man. I was using it in the majority of the games. I mean, they're not doing a great job uh, in game. They've got the lead for now, but again, classic Dom capture the flags. UAVs and all sorts, kill streaks coming up. No one's, uh, I don't think it was going too crazy with any of the kill streak choices. We did see Crim6 with a VTOL earlier. Again, classic from MW19. Yep. Uh, I, I wonder if we're going to see any more today. Oh, you saw that. He, he yeah. Out. I can imagine, I mean, this is the chance to test everything. Yeah. Run through, try different weapons. I mean, as much as I say that, we know how a lot of these people are. They're going for crazy clips. They want to drop bombs. They want to have high kill games. So <laughs> some are going to find stuff they like, little combination they feel comfortable with, and they're going to send it. But Crowder, yeah, he's in the mix right now. Movement, I mean, he seems pretty comfortable so far. Just the little hop chows. Yeah, the bunny hop freebies. Like earlier, just hopping around. You can even hip fire this one. He's picking up a ton of kills. He's he's loving this class setup. He switched it up from last time. So one of the big things, I mean, before the show started, I walked around and talked to as many of the streamers as I possibly could. And I was just like, you know, you've had a tiny bit of time with the game. How are you feeling about this? And almost every single one of them said, I'm really struggling not to slide everywhere. They've been so used well, to doing that. Used to it. From um, MW19 all the way through to Warzone when you know we're on Caldera. It, it, it's not the same. I it's can, not the same. I can say that just from all the wars that I've played, like it it's gonna take like my hand, just the muscle memory of it. Like I'm yeah. just so I've been side canceling now for years across the map. It's just gonna take a little getting used to, 100 percent yeah, but I do think my out. hands are going to be very happy, though. <laughs> I'm not having to do that constantly across the map. Yeah, if you try to slide around now, you might, might even be slower than just sprinting. Honestly, yeah. That's but how it, it looks. It, again, it's how you use it. Is the dive is a really great mechanic That's for good. escaping. The slide gets you into different positions. Obviously, I like the lead with my head. You know, the, 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 the ball the ball head. So I think the diving thing's going to be good for me. Just like a bowling ball, you know, Miles? Just or sending it through a door, sitting it through a window. Maybe I uh, diving into someone. You think I can knock somebody out that way? Or if there's an attachment for you. Uh, you? Yeah. Like a, it's like a unicorn like a type bayonet power. Or something. Yeah, bayonet on my head. <laughs> okay, that sounds sick though. Hold Honestly, hold on. uh, if the devs are listening, let's think about that a little bit. <laughs> a bayonet <laughs> dive kill. Oh, oh my god, I want that immediately. <laughs> I'm thinking like, uh, you know, I've, I've got this idea of like, you know, Yondu. Who does, uh, oh, he's got a big sniper. fin on his head. Yes. Like, know, but make yes. that a blade. Absolutely. Isaac. Oh, quick swap again. That is his sidearm. That's his pistol. Can the range on that bad boy is going to be all that crazy, but you know it's going to rip when it hits. The sniper's just so satisfying when you get to kill the sound, yeah. how deep it is. It's amazing. It feels like there's no drag in the sniper. When you were using an ant, did you have to leave Ooh, your shot that, at all, or was it, it a like direct it, hit? It felt like an invasion, like I had to leave my shot a little okay. bit, but that could just be because I'm rusty. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> and I was trying to shoot across the map. That's a. Uh, but you can get some feeds, man. Like, I got a couple collapses with this gun. It's super powerful. Sniping his back, friends. Not to dub. Snipes feel fast and fun. Again. 64! What? 
destroyed. Yeah, we destroyed thought, we thought from Bread from was that, popping yeah. off. Destroys up there, frying. He's got double the score of everybody in the lobby. Ooh. All right, all right. Look at this. Oh, oh man, through God. the door with the pistol. A lot of windows on that map as well. A lot of glass above those door frames. I found on, uh, you know, keeping the teasers out it, but like opening breaks and stuff. A lot of sweet nade spots already. Uh, yeah, I, it's, I can't wait. I cannot wait. A little peek at the menu here now as well, of course, while Isaac gets ready to get into his next game. So much, so much in Modern Warfare 2. Uh, we're almost actually ready to keep the show, run, keep the show running. Jess, you're down there with Zuma. Tell us how Tommy's doing. Miles, that's right, I am right here with Zuma, Tommy Properado himself. So, I mean, you have now had your first taste of Modern Warfare 2 here at COD Next. What did you think? Oh, it's incredible. The game feels super smooth. The gunplay is awesome. I like the time to kill. And the maps are dope. A lot of close quarter uh, uh, gunfights. And, uh, you know, I've been having a blast, man. The chat's loving it as well. They're loving it. So there's so much to talk about, you know, new modes, new maps, changes to the gunsmith. But what really stands out to you? Like, what are you excited about? I'm really excited just to get the competition going. I mean, I'm excited for the CDO, and I heard them talking about ranked play, so, you know, I'm really excited for that. Um, and Warzone 2 looked incredible as well. I was talking to Repulse. We're going to be the Warzone duo this year, so I'll be bouncing around between the both, but I'm just excited for something new, you know, a new game, and it's been a lot of fun to play, and there's so many amazing creators here. Um, and just thank you to everybody, and thank you to Call of Duty for the opportunity to be here. It's awesome. And then, you know, real quick with Modern Warfare 2 on the horizon, what does the year ahead look like for you? Man, just a lot of shows, man. A lot of flanks, a lot of streams. I mean, the content's going to be pushing all year. So excited, man. Zoomafi's going to take over, and we're going uh, to have, have some fun, man. We're going to have some fun. All right, well, thank you so much. That is all from me for now. I believe I'm handing it off to my dear friend, Lottie. Thank you so much, Jess, and it is so good to be here. My name is Lottie. First time on the desk, first time, of course, being in this incredible Hi. arena. I have a lot of uh, wonderful folks on this desk, but it is now time to chat about an epic giveaway from our friends at Jack Links. Each Jack Links supply drop includes a brand new copy of Modern Warfare on the platform of your choice. Delicious Jack Links limited edition products and brand new epic in-game items that I promise you'll be dying to get your hands on. So check this out on how to enter. Looking for an epic way to celebrate the launch of Modern Warfare 2? Jack Links has got you covered, giving you the chance to win the ultimate Modern Warfare 2 supply drop. Keep an eye out during the broadcast for the Jack Links Sasquatch to appear on screen. If you see it, grab your phone and scan the QR code, following the prompts to qualify for entry. Tune in to Call of Duty next. Squad up with Sasquatch and level up for the ultimate viewing experience, courtesy of Jack Links. Terms and conditions apply. All right, folks, so keep your eyes peeled to spot the Sasquatch on the screen throughout the show. Scan that QR code and enter all your information for a chance to win. But it is my absolute honor and pleasure to be on the desk, of course, alongside Maven. But we also have Jeff and Joe on here to talk all things Modern Warfare 2. Of course, our multiplayer design directors here. And we're just going to get a bit nerdy, to be honest. You know, we're going to look at a bit of gameplay. I am so excited to talk about it, but maybe I've got to ask you, what do you want to dive into first? We have uh, the two guys that are going to answer our questions. Well, here. first off, by the way, you guys killed it in the opening you of the did. show. Well, thank you, you know, thank it you. started real smooth. I'm sure nerves are going a little <laughs> bit, but it was it was awesome to see. But uh, I know we're going to have gameplay that's going to, going to be popping up. We're going to chat through stuff. But I think one thing I kind of want to chat through is just there's been a lot of significant changes. You guys are always looking to how to kind of tweak the wheel a little bit. Can we chat through kind of the perk change and where your head was at with regards to that? Because it's it's a big change. It's interesting. Yeah, you know, uh, perks haven't really been touched for a long time in the series. Um, and I guess by nature, they're passive. And so um, most of the time we found people just, uh, you know, find the three that they like and that's it. They kind of forget about this. I said that earlier. That's me. Yeah. Like, I, I find a few I like and like that's my class. Right, there so we go. We just wanted to come up with a system that was a little bit more engaging. And so we, we grouped them into three different categories. Um, you get two to start with and then you pick a third and then you pick a fourth and they're, uh, they're rewarded af as you play. Um, you really like how they per uh, they they um, proc, proc at the yeah, end, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, an announcer comes up, tells you what perk you got, and it kind of re-engages you with what's available, right? And they're earned through time and score, so eventually you'll get them. And you're not gonna, you're not gonna, it doesn't reset on death. Um, it allowed us to to kind of like create a couple more powerful perks and put them at the end because you're not gonna have them the whole match. And there's some interesting depth there where you can say, okay, UAVs are really powerful early match. Like there's different things you can do where you're kind of like, if you're one of those players who really wants to noodle, you're like, okay, I know these aren't in play yet. 
Um, well, I, I like, I, I guess, listen, it's very different, but I, I'm also a big like RPG guy, so I like the process of like unlocking things and earning things. It's just like at the core of who I am. So I dig that, just like the progression over the course of one single map, I think is very cool. Yeah, it just feels good. It feels good. And it feels good to be reminded what you have. Yeah, yeah, no, no, 100%. Oh, and I guess we didn't touch on actually is the packages, right? From so like. We're talking a lot about the theory crafting of what yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, we actually packs. have these defined packages. So early on, you just say, you know, I want a, this play style. I just grab this package and go. And then later on, you're like, okay, I, I like that, but I want to noodle a little bit. You yeah. can hop in and create your own packages. You know, yeah. that, that, that kind of, um, it really, people can see that through the default loadouts. Um, and we've packaged in, based on those kind of player behaviors we were talking about earlier, we've, we've usually shipped six or five default loadouts, but we have six with this one. Okay. We found two for each behavior, and so um, those perk packages are um, already in there, um, and it's something different in this game. We actually allow you to attach a field upgrade within that, um, within each loadout. And so it's a little bit more micromanagey, but it felt to us that you're kind of more creating your class and your character for, you know, um, in that. Um, so people in the in the beta should really try out those default loadouts because we put a lot of time into how those um, play. Well, I'm curious in like play testing. Did you see like a? I'm sure everyone has a way they view themselves as a player. Like maybe you want to start as more of like a sentinel type. Did you see like as people got more comfortable with the game, like an evolution towards maybe a faster pace? Or what did you notice when play testing these different types of things? Yeah, I mean I think overall most of our players are rushers. Yeah, um, but, no, <laughs> you're not um, you're not wrong. It depends <laughs> on the circles you run, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. you know. There, there are these other players, and, and we wanted to just make sure that, you know, we're supporting all of them. Um, and so, you know, some of the field upgrades can be more um, sentinel and trying to hold down positions. Um, but that's why we added in the DDoS, like we said, to kind of just say, I've had enough. I want to pause all this stuff and make it go away. <laughs> yeah. um, but we also leaned into creating game modes that can um, facilitate this kind of siege gameplay. But. Now we talk about the rushing players, right? But we also want to talk about the pacing, the movement, you know, what it looks like, how it feels to be in game. And when I got a chance to get on the sticks yesterday, something I noticed is it is a little bit slower paced, right? Uh, we're going to be sprinting round, not sliding round. And I think another thing I want to talk about is the dolphin dives. I've been diving down <laughs> escalators, getting prone, looking at hard points, trying to figure out, can I see bombsite B or A? Like, you know, it, it's pretty incredible with the movement and how it feels. Uh, what was it like making that? What were the decisions behind that pushing forward? Because the feel of the game is huge. Yeah, I think, I think fluidity, and I mentioned it previously, is like really, really important, right? But we did make some small tweaks, right? Like slide has a little bit more of a hang up so that people aren't just sliding around the map so that they're actually moving through spaces, checking corners, and, and kind of like pacing themselves. But the general movement of guns should be almost exactly the same. And Jeff and I regularly check in. We're like, okay, how are we? How are we doing? Like, let's look at last game. Let's look at this game, and we try and be consistent in that regard. But there have been these small tweaks, and the dive is one of those tweaks. The ledge hang is one of those tweaks, um, and those will change how people move through a space. Right? You won't throw yourself over a wall. You'll peek that wall first. Yeah, I love the ledge hangs because uh, you know, just testing out yesterday. Being able to kind of ledge hang and really use it as intel as well. I think when it comes to multiplayer and, and competitive side, that's kind of where I'm at here, is being able in s and uh, just being able to know where people are, give that intel to your team, peek that back down again, making sure you're not getting your dome ripped off by a sniper, of course, uh, major stuff here. but. And exciting that the fact that you can get your secondary weapon out and start to put a bit of damage in and, and help out there. So in terms of ledge hang, where did that come from? What was the idea behind it? You know, why is it so special to have it in the game? Um, to be honest, it came out of uh, face planting too many times. <laughs> of parachuting yeah, in, yeah, yeah. just missing that ledge. And you're like, nope, that's frustrating. Let's fix that. Um, well, we've all been there. Like, you're, whether you've been playing Warzone, like you're trying to like hop and grab it and you just like, it's like you want to hit the button to like activate the pull up, but then yeah, you hit your shoot and you're like falling down. It can be so frustrating. Yeah. So I mean, really, that's where it came from. But yeah, it was, it was also the high mantle too, right? Like late when we were developing Modern Warfare, and then you know Warzone started to come out, um, we had these walls and things. We ended up turning up the mantle height in Warzone. Okay. And it it didn't feel as polished, but it allowed people to get over walls they otherwise couldn't. And, but like I said before, you kind of commit, and now you're like, throw yourself over a wall and get shot as you make that transition. So the high mantle is definitely like, get up, you can peek, or you can just double tap it and pull yourself over if you're in a hurry. Um, it just adds that 
that extra layer of like I can be a little bit smarter about how I move through the space. That's a that's a good note that um, you know we make all of the equipment, all of the movement, and all of these things for scalability, and we have to kind of check ourselves that everything we put here is going to show up in Warzone. Well, now so, you've got this like metaverse of like there's so much. There's yeah, so it's much a big kind of like I was saying earlier, right? It's like, not hard, man. I'm sure. It, it's like how do you add different things in and and, and make sure it all stays in check and, and not mess up this ecosystem. Well, it feels like. I, I, I guess for me, when I view it, well, what has been the one thing, at least for me, that really separates Call of Duty from a lot of other shooters? It's like, it does feel so fluid, but like there's a limit to that too. You don't need to be an amoeba. Like it's just like floating through the map. Like you want to be some realism to it, but like how can you add that realism and the ability to, I mean, think about, I don't know, 10 years ago, what you were able to do with just like interacting with the map of what it's come to now. I mean, it's insane how much it's changed. We had to argue to get sprinting into, uh, I think it was COD 4. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah, we didn't have that, and so like just the evolution of where Yeah, it's, it's come a long ways. I played the very first one, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been pretty pretty special, and something else that's a bit special as well is the fact that we have all these content creators behind us. We have an Olgatha replay for you guys. It's actually Myth here uh, on Prison Rescue. Just going to check this one out and see exactly yeah, what went down here. And Prison Rescue is going to be really on exciting one, of course, because you have you know, to that, that, get that objective of, done. Um, you need to go rescue really the prisoner. And carrying them out is going to be huge, because that icon does disappear. You know. How did it work Based with this kind of prisoner being able to put them earlier, in the we, game, we, we uh, knowing really that somebody's going to have to run this prisoner back and extract them, and having that defense to be set up later on and have to completely and utterly change the game, go to that defensive mode? What was the kind of makings behind that? So, so it, was, it was actually kind of a hard mode to make, and we went through all these different iterations, and we had these problems where we're like, hey, the mode's around rescuing these prisoners, but people, they weren't able to, right? We're like, hey, do this heroic thing, and rounds just kept ending in elimination because it was so hard. And that's why we added the the um, the radar sweep that you get when you get the prisoner. And that's why we took the icon away when you pick the prisoner up. Because we were going through, and we used to have, we tried with one prisoner, we tried with two right next to each other. We tried all these different iterations. And it took a while before we, we everything kind of clicked. And you often when you're making game modes, you don't really know. Like some of them pretty quickly, you're like, oh, there it is. Yeah. But this one took a lot of work, a lot of finessing. And, and then we finally got it to where there is this balance and we're seeing more hero moments. And that replay we saw, he actually, I think of that one, but I was, while we were talking earlier, I saw him actually pick up the prisoner and take it all the way to extract and yeah. have that run. And that's what we wanted, that hero run. Yeah. I'm just thinking about like how crazy it's gotten. Like, I, I don't envy <laughs> you guys at all. I mean, I do, you have great jobs. But like, the fact that you have to think about like, everything within this sandbox like from we are trying to make a new mode like how is some new movement or anything going to affect warzone how's it going to affect ground war invasion like i think every game you have that moment at the sleeping. end of the previous one you're like okay <laughs> how do we squeeze more blood from the stone yeah right right, like, right? and it's like but then you start iterating and trying different things and and you do kind of like all of a sudden it's ballooned and you're like, oh no, we have to cut stuff. We have too much. Yeah, I mean, Jeff, Joe, this is a pretty hard question, but just to kind of wrap things up here, you know, I think when, when you talk about Call of Duty, when you listen to feedback from players and, and different generations, they always talk about that nostalgic feeling that they get when they get on the game. What is it about Modern Warfare 2 this time around, this title in particular, do you think that is going to bring generations back years to come and say, look, Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2 excuse me, was my game and this is why I want to play it year in, year out? Yeah, you know, nostalgia is a weird thing. And I know from, from working on past games and people speaking so highly of these different things, and, it's, and um, it's kind of where you're at in your world and your friends and things like that. And so for us, we can't really control that, but we, we, we try to lay out um, kind of, I don't know, for the lack of a better term, like you're kind of laying out a nice meal <laughs> and you're hoping that everyone enjoys it. And, and um, from all the systemic play with all of our equipment and, and all these different interactive systems, we're just hoping that fans find new and crazy ways um, to play the game. Um, I don't know, what about you? You just want it to be I mean, fun. I mean, yeah. it's yeah. yeah, right? Because yeah. like, yep. I mean, nostalgia, you gotta probably tune some of it out. Like some stuff, it, that's tough. It's, yeah, you yeah. don't know what's gonna hold become nostalgic, <laughs> right? You don't know. And I think one of our strengths is, though is that we, I run into people all the time and they're like, I'm an S&D player. Yeah. I'm a Warzone player, I'm a Plunder player. Like, you know, like I, 
I love TDM. That's my I just play that. And so it's interesting that we're we're fortunate to be able to make all these different offerings so that people can come into our game. And they're like, I love big war vehicular combat. I'm going to ground war, right? And so I think that's a, an advantage that we have, that people can find their place, the thing they love, bring their friends in, and then years to come, they're like, I remember that. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah a bunch of different experiences for sure. And I've got to say, the fact that we haven't even really scratched the surface yet, you know, we're here at the reveal. We're seeing it for the first time. There's so many questions that we have as well. I want to know what some of the challenges have been uh, for you guys to develop this game, uh, to really get it to the point that it is now where you are comfortable to show it to the world and reveal it. You know, what some of the hardships been along the way in this ride? Uh, you know, I think the big kind of elephant in the room is just, you know, a lot of this was made from people's homes, you know? Um, yeah. You're looking at people's art and, and work that, you know, people in their home spaces are, is their living room. Wild. They're, it's wild. I work out of a shed yeah. in my backyard. <laughs> um, some, there's people in their mom's basement. I bet it's a cool shed, though. Not really. No. <laughs> but, Hot. you know, but the, the, the fact that we can get this done through, you know, millions of Zoom meetings and millions of kind of um, a keeping everybody up to date and, and so many different studios, not just ours, um, uh, you know, all these different Activision studios to kind of keep on on point and, and, and make sure that everything is, you know, good and, and great. It's it's um, it's been tricky. Yeah, I think it's a, I mean, that's a, I think it's a great segue to like we have a really talented team and we're up here representing that team, whether it's the multiplayer team, the engineering team, the animation team, yeah. the art team. And they're all specialists in what they do, the fidelity on our view model animations, the guns, everything, the art and the maps, the design. Our geo designers, they make these 6v6 type maps, they make these huge ground war maps, and they put it all together into this massive big map, and everything needs to sing. <laughs> and so all, I mean, all we can do is thank them and, and do our best to represent them. I'm kind of curious, were there any like, positives for me from a creative standpoint with like, the fact everyone was in the office and like everyone was kind of like away, like I almost feel like maybe that would lead to some interesting ideas. Like when everyone's maybe not in a room and like maybe one idea kind of takes precedent, like everyone's just kind of isolated a little bit more. I just wonder if there was any like creative advantages there. Yeah, I think a lot of I think a lot of people were worried that um, kind of like productivity would go down by li 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 living at home. But um, people, we just found that everyone was so passionate about you know making this game that they could either play a game or their PCs sitting there and they could <laughs> make the game better. And yeah. they're, you know, consistently working way too, you know, too much. And we're like, hey, oh, calm down. We're, yeah. we're good. Let's get, you know. Um, so I think that is a little bit of the, of the fun part. What I heard in some cases, like productivity actually like went up, which you yep. didn't expect. And like yep. now people are downscaling offices. <laughs> so I was kind of curious if yeah, you just had like a lot of I know superstars kind of show up and yeah. pop out some really amazing stuff. Yeah, it's 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 tricky because, you know, um, we've just now been coming back in and getting kind of that kind of co community yeah, in the yeah. office, and that has been um, a great way of kind of solidifying the game and getting people back sure. in and and feeling the you don't get the big hoots and hollers when you're at home, right? Yeah. So yeah. we get people in the office, we get them in the big pit, and we're all playing. And Gold like, star. <laughs> yeah, you get that feedback loop yeah, of like yeah, I yeah. made good stuff and someone's happy. Yeah. yeah. Look, drawing back the curtain a little bit, because when I think of how to handle a brand new game, a brand new title, bringing all these exciting factors to it, I'm thinking of like bare bones, you know, in your shed maybe, with a whiteboard, you know, just writing things on, just brainstorming. What is that process like? You know, building the blocks, building the foundation behind this brand new game, putting those ideas down on paper. How does it work for your team? Well, that's a big question. <laughs> uh, I mean, one, one, one aspect we used was um, we tried to kind of break everything down as simply as possible. And that really is just like a one-on-one -on -one interaction. Yeah. You know? Like, if you imagine how many times a one-on-one -on -one interaction happens in a multiplayer or in single player, and like, what, is, what does that look like? You know, they could just shoot each other. But, you know, it's, it's what, is, what is in your loadout, what's in my loadout. It's almost like it's like a card game where I, I use my flash and you use your smoke. And yeah, like, right. And so, like, we really worked on how many permutations and how that can play out. And so we figured if, if, if we can get that to come and, and play out in a lot of different ways, we can make a really deeply replayable game, and which should, you know, make everyone really happy at the end of the day. Nah, it seems like everyone's having a blast so far. I mean, this just this in general, it's got to uh, it's got to be pretty special to see. Just this many Kate careers here, gas up and join the game. I mean, it's been absolutely incredible. Honestly, Jeff, Joe, thank you so much for being here, giving Thanks, us guys. all the insights, letting us nerd out a little bit, ask all the questions that we're dying to know. Uh, but I tell you what, it's about time right now to head on over to the main stage to talk a little bit more about COD Mobile. We've got Beef Mummy and Matt Lewis over there. Let's take it over to them and see what they have in store.
All right, all right. Thank you so much, Lottie. And welcome back to the Command Center presented by Xfinity Rewards. And it's time to finally drop into some epic Warzone mobile gameplay. And joining me here, none other than Matt Lewis. I've been so excited to bring you into this stage. He is the Vice President of Product Management for Mobile. Thank you so much. I am super excited to be here today. We just have some awesome, awesome gameplay. We have some cool new surprises for you. So I'm just really looking forward to sharing this moment with you and with just the entire Call of Duty community. I'm so excited. I'm just ready to get into action. And obviously things are just heating up over here. And it really is impressive what you've been able to pull off here. And watching someone play, it looks great. It feels great. It's running, it's as if it's running off a console to be honest. It's true. How did you guys make this from the ground up? Yeah, it's 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 a great question. So one of our game pillars was what we call relentlessly war zone. I like to think of it this way. There are a set of emotions and an overall gameplay quality, something that's felt when you play war zone. And for us, you know, that's something, it's a product of these proprietary combat and movement systems, the Verdansk map tons of vehicles and some unique war zone mechanics, things like the gulag and in-game loadout drop. So you put all these together in a pot, mix them around, put some magic powder in there and boom, war zone. So games, they can try to match this recipe and they can spend a decade, you know, iterating and testing and trying this and that, but they're just not able to quite get there. So for us, being on the same technology, it means we don't have to tinker nearly as much. It's just an incredible advantage for us. So how was the team able to do it and just really pull off everything that you've had here so far? With tons of coffee. <laughs> no wonder why we don't have any more coffee here backstage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the truth. All the coffee in the world is how we were able to do it. No, you know, one of the things that I just love about this project, it's, it's, a, really, it's a really great mix of talent and experience. Um, and for us, that concoction was what allowed us to have this kind of great end product. Uh, so for us, you know, there, 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 there are four major studios who are working on Warzone Mobile. Activision Shanghai, Beanox, Digital Legends, and Solid State Studios. So our philosophy, it's been to mix together really amazing Call of Duty console and PC developers with some of the best mobile developers in the business. Because that's what we want, you know, an authentic adrenaline pumping war zone, but something that is ultimately in this made for mobile, amazing, super polished mobile experience. It's been so much fun watching all of these streamers today. And this game looks like a really great time. What is the best way for our viewers at home to guarantee they will be the first to drop in and play Call of Duty Warzone Mobile? It's a great question. It's a great question. Um, so for us, pre-registration is going to start today. We'll have a little bit more on that later. We're super, super, super excited. And if you're on Google Play, if you log on to, to the Google Play Store right now, you'll be able to, to, um, to start to pre-register. If you're on other platforms, please keep an eye out on all the social channels. Uh, we have the social channels live now, so follow, comment, all that, all that, all that kind of good stuff. And we're coming soon on the Apple App Store for pre-order. Um, we have some incredible rewards. I'm going to talk about those maybe in a few minutes, but maybe for now, kick it over, check out some gameplay. Oh yeah, I can't wait to go and pre-register for myself. I'm just so excited, but. That brings an end to our coverage of Call of Duty Warzone Mobile. And honestly, it's been such an amazing, great time here. But obviously, before we do end all of these, we're going to try to see what kind of fun all these streamers are bringing it up over here because we are taking up on the screen right now. I mean, this ends with us just trying to introduce the game, but obviously every one of us, we want to see the gameplay. We want to see everything that's happening here. And obviously I am with the best person to talk about everything that is happening here on your screen right now. Oh man. So when I'm looking at this gameplay right now, for me, one of the things I love about Warzone that vehicle play, the vehicle play, the movement and the combat systems all tied together. I'm a thumb player, I can't do the claw myself, so when I see other thumb players in particular on the vehicles, it's a soft spot for me. I just feel great. Yeah, I mean, I feel like a lot of the players right now, even if you're not on mobile, you just see this map and you go like, 
you go back way back 2020 and you're just seeing this map for dance it's just you're basically having a little bit of a throwback from when you used to play this map and you get to play it here on mobile and so i feel like it's just so exciting to finally see this map back into life and really we're just ready to play i know yes we're on alpha right now but i played the game yesterday it feels amazing 100 percent. I, th I think you nailed it i think the team is really 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 happy with where we are if we think of the development process we typically think about uh, four stages and we're in the second